World Combat Sports. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. You know what it is. It's fight night. Las Vegas, MGM Grand. Top rank affair. A top rank affair. And you know what it is? The main event is going to be Jason Maloney versus Leonardo Baez. And what's so important about this fight is the Maloney brothers are stepping into the U.S. footprint of boxing. And, you know, um, when fighters come over here for the first time, some of them shine and some of them don't. That's just point blank the way it is. And, you know, Joshua Franco was able to take the shine away from Andrew Maloney, the brother of Jason Maloney, and hand him his first loss. It, it moves him to 21 and one. And Joshua Franco, one of the fighters of Robert Garcia, ended up taking home the strap. So that's the way it, sh it should be, man, uh, with no audience. I'm pretty sure they celebrated. They had a nice freaking dinner, had a couple of drinks, salute. And um, we move on to the co-main event. Abraham Nova against Avery Sparrow, junior lightweight, 130-pound division. That should be good to go. So let's turn this up a little bit and get to the fights. So who we have on deck right now? We have Clay Burns versus Raymond Yang Nong. Um, Yang Nong. Clay Burns is looking aggressive thus far, man. Yadong. 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 He looked like he's a Filipino fighter, though. And they use him pretty tough. He looked like a bulked up Manny Pacquiao. I'm not trying to compare him to another fighter that looked like that because I hate when people do that with black fighters. But he looked like a, a, um, a heavier. Manny Pacquiao, you know, but even though Manny Pacquiao is fighting at 147 right now, um, not not 147, but um, yeah, 147. Um, these these fighters are fighting on um, 147 too, and you know, these catch weights are killing me because they put welterweight down there, which is junior, but you can't be fighting unless it's a it's a freaking they give you a couple of pounds here and there. You know what I'm saying? Junior welterweight, whatever the case may be. You know, they fighting at a catch weight of 143 right now. So that's outside the weight limit of junior welterweight, and that's below the welterweight division. But as I was saying, he looked like a swolled up Manny Pacquiao. What's up, everybody? Hopefully, y'all doing well. It's Thursday. It's closer to the weekend for a lot of y'all. Let's get it. It's fight night once again, man. You got to be happy that the fights are back. That's what it's all about. Clay Burns looking very aggressive in the early round. I mean, you know, it's it's round two, but he, he was very aggressive in that first round, man. He squares up a lot. You know, I can I can tell that early. He's a southpaw. You know, I like the counters that I'm seeing from you. Yeong. Yeong is is basically looking for the counters right now. Stand composed. 143. This is, this guy looks pretty bulked up for 143. Got big shoulders. So he should, you know, he got big back, big shoulders. Should be able to put some power behind those punches, man. 
So I'm seeing right now Clay Burns is a, is a, is a switch hitter. You know what I'm saying? He was fighting it at um, Southpaw, and now he's back to Orthodox. So he's a switch hitter. You know, that's what I see first. Burns look like he's about trying to do that shoulder roll. Okay. I see you. Yeah, Young, you know, he he looked like the stronger fighter a little bit, but man, goddamn Burns is scrappy. Burns is scrappy, man. It's a six round fight, so let's see how his cardio hold up. He is definitely aggressive. He's active. He's giving different looks to Yeong. I like his subtle defense. He threw that jab, and Yeong, Yeong turned, returned it with a right counter. And he just slipped it out. You know, didn't too, put too much effort into it, just leaned back just a little bit. So he's very slick right now. You know, I like what I'm seeing. Avery Sparrow. Listen, I, I think Avery Sparrow might upset a Abraham Nova, man. I'm just telling you ahead of time. It, it, it seemed like it's going to be a very competitive fight. You know? So now they're coming up, you know, with protocols for COVID-19. If you probably heard, the numbers are pretty... Um, the numbers have um, increased a bit in certain regions. So, you know, COVID-19 ain't went nowhere, man. I'm very um, curious to see how this takes place and carry out over the next months pertaining to boxing and combat sports in general. Will we be back on another lockdown? This is the third frame, man. Burns come out very aggressive, landing some combinations, stand in the pocket. I like how he's using that left hook, that lead left hook. Young returned that one. When Burns does come in, he's letting his hands, he letting his hands go. Sometimes, you know, he'll have a high guard like Winky Wright, and the next he, he act like he's, you know, going to give you the Philly shell. See how he just slipped that right hand by Young? Young? Yeah, young. That's his name. Yeah, young. Okay, got it. Just appreciate that, Timothy. <laughs> yeah, young. So he's doing the same thing. When when Yeah, young counters with the right, all Burns is doing is just moving his head straight back out of range. So what Yeah, young needs to do is just step when he throws the right hand. Stop standing flat footed. Step with it. Step forward. So you can kind of you know close that distance down just a little bit better. So, so Burns switched back to Southpaw. And then in the process of him using a different angle, he switched back in between to Orthodox. So he stepped in with a, with a um, right hook. It didn't do too much damage, but I like whenever he changes stances, he does use that lead hook whether it's the right hook or the left hook, he does implement it into his offense. Oh, man, that's four punches right there. Yeah, Young, he's going to have to do something about that. He's just letting Burns walk through the front door into the living room and goddamn open the fridge and whatever he wants to take out that bitch, he's doing it.
Oh, yeah, Ye Young is landing. It's turned into a good fight. Very good fight. Shout out to Asian Money, um, Mr. The Zone, man. Y'all go over there and subscribe to that man channel. You know, smash the like button. He live right now, too, man. So if y'all want to go over there and check him out, go check him out, man. He's talking boxing, too. You know, H Money, um, Mr. The Zone, man. So go check him out. Salute to him. Keep on doing your thing. ESPN on a commercial break. Got to pay the bills. But, yeah, man, you know, when it comes down to boxing, there's a lot that's going on. You know, every time I turn around, every time I turn around, man, I see Tyson Fury in the media. So the only thing I can think of is they keep giving them the mic. They keep giving them shine. And Ty, um, um, Tyson Fury is going to show up. But I'll talk more about that in between the fights. Nice stiff jab down low, man. By Burns. He caught Burns squared up. Yeah, Young called him finally with that with that left. He finally called him with that left. What I tell you, Ye, Ye Nong need to do. He need to step in. If he's gonna lead with that, he need to step in. And I think he's he's stepping. He's he was outside of range initially. Now he's stepping up and closing down on the distance a little bit. You know what I'm saying? This is a good fight. What's going on, um, Junior? Who you like in the co-main event? Nova is a beast. Hey, man, this is going to be a good fight between Abraham Nova and Avery Sparrow. But I think, you know, Avery Sparrow, man, he might pull off the upset. We'll see. We'll see, man. I, I was going for Avery Sparrow um, as far as if you're asking me who, I'm, who I think will win the fight. But, you know, Abraham Nova is who he is, man. You know what I'm saying? It'll be a good fight. Heavy shots by Ye Nong. Heavy shots. He's getting in close now to Clay Burns. Appreciate you stopping through that, Junior. Now I see Ye Nong making adjustments. He's making he's making adjustments. The first two rounds, he was just, you know, standing a little bit outside. He wasn't really getting close when he was letting his hands go. Now, now he's getting off his shots and they're landing. They're scoring. Let's see how, how long it holds up, man. One thing about it, Clay Burns is game, though. Oh, solid right hand by Ye Nong. Oh, nice solid shots. Call him stepping in. Oh, he's getting the timing down on Clay Burns. He's getting his timing. Oh, another right hand. Solid. Burns ate it. Now Burns is really standing in the pocket. Some boxers, if you touch him, I mean, especially with some power on it, some sting, it makes them change immediately, impulsive. They get closer, and they got to cash it back, man. They got to return the favor, and that's what Clay Burns is doing. Good job, but you know, you know what I'm saying? He was able to land some hard shots just then. This fight is close. Miguel Burchette, dudes is a beast. Abraham Nova with the gold spread down here. You know what I'm saying? Coming in with a different look. You know, whatever works for him. We're going to see a good fight tonight in the co-main event. Real talk. We're going to see a good fight tonight.
Ye Nong is inside in the space of Burns, not allow him to be comfortable. He's digging to the body and then going up top whenever he feels like it. He's really placing his the correct shots that he need right now. And, and, and it's effective. He's 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 um, coming on strong on this fight. Burns Burns early on, man. You know, he haven't you know, he, it seems like he slowed down from the first rounds. I don't know if he pressed the gas a little bit too much. Um, but he seems to slow down. He's not as sharp, you know, as he was in, in the first two rounds. But Ye, Ye Nong, he, he pretty much waited it, waited it out, you know. And now he's really standing in the pocket, going to the body effectively. I like what I'm saying. Those hooks to the body, very, very solid. Oh, very solid one, too. Oh, up top, he caught Burns with that right hand. Burns is going to have to do something different. If he was switching stances before, now he's he's more fatigued. He need to move his head. He need to start, you know, using that side to side movement, man. Oh, you see that three punch combination? Yeah, you know, step back. And fired off that three punch combination. Beautiful. Nice. D Ray in the building, man. Salute to you. Appreciate you stopping through, man. It's going to be a good fight, man. Everybody's looking forward to this Abraham Nova, Avery Sparrow, man. He's coming in with the freaking gold beard. You know what I'm saying? He's coming in showing a little bit different look. Oh, Ye Nong, man, has him in the corner. Burns seems like he's. He's running on films a little bit. He's going to have to do something about this pressure Ye Nong is giving him right now. Yeah, the sixth round is on deck, man. I know Burns is like, damn, I'm glad it's here. I'm going to see how he look in the sixth round, though. This is a close fight. And if I had to say, you know, that Ye Nong pretty much came back. You know, Burns looked tired. So three, four, and five, maybe Yanong and one and two, um, possibly Burns. Who you got in the cold main event and the main event, um, D Ray? Who you got, man? Man, they're trying to motivate the hell out of Burns. Burns sitting back in the corner with his head on the buckle. Oh, them body shots hurt. Ye Nong digging. He got the shovels out. It's construction. Um, six and final frame right here. Ye Nong is getting off right now. He's really firing off, man. I mean, he's not even really leading with the jab. He's just stepping in with the right sometime, right, left, right, left. Nice jab to the body by Burns. Burns is using more movement this final frame. I know he looked exhausted in the corner. Let's see. You know, um, 214 remaining. Burns is doing a lot more moving, but yet it's not 
anywhere close to actually landing any type of shots in this final final um round and he really needs this round good good head movement right there look at all those shots he slipped i like that for somebody who's a little bit fatigued that was nice but now you know he has him in the corner man he's landing some solid shots headlock by burns to slow down the pace a little bit catch his breath Yanong is just digging to the body. He's trying to deflate anything that Burns has left in the tank. Lead right hook by Burns. Return countered by Yanong. A minute 10 remaining. Um, you know, it's an okay round. Nobody's really taking the lead and doing anything definitive. Good jab by Burns, double, doubling up on his lead jab. Okay, right, left by Burns. Fighters clinch. 45 seconds remaining in the fight. Burns getting off, man. He's staying active on the inside, letting, letting, you know, letting his hands go. Another one-two by um, Yanong. Nice right-hand counter by Burns. Pop the head back of Yanong. Yanong's staying active, though. He's stepping in. Ever since he started stepping in, just closing distance, he's been able to land those shots he was missing in the early round. Burn with the right hook. Burns is going. He's going for it. You know, he's trying to finish strong. He's trying to finish strong. Good fight. Good fight. I know they say, shit, I want to hit the showers and goddamn go get me something to eat. I'm, I'm done. I'm tired. That was a tough six rounder. But good fight, man. Good fight, shawty. Who y'all think won that fight? Talk, talk to me in the live chat. Who y'all think won that fight? Yenong or Burns? Let me know. Who y'all think won that fight? So 324 thrown for Burns, a 389 in Yenong. Landed 94 for Burns, 102 for um Yenong. So... You know, punches landed, man, go in favor of Yanong slightly. Just a slight um, differential. But we'll see what the judges think. It's a close fight, man. We'll see what the judges think. Y'all woke in the live chat, man. Who y'all think won this fight? Jason Maloney is getting wrapped up. You know, I'm um, just thinking back a little bit, giving y'all a little boxing knowledge. Um, that was his brother. Andrew Maloney just coming off his fight. There to support his brother, you know. But um, Jason Maloney was supposed to face Joshua Greer, you know, in the Bantamweight fight. So that fight fell through due to COVID-19 or whatever the case was. And I think that fight would have been good for Joshua Greer. I, I would have seen Joshua Greer going in there winning that fight with um, Jason Maloney rather than having a tough um, go at it with Mike Clania. And it, it, it probably would, it definitely would have kept him at the top of the rankings and would have basically, you know, put him at the front door of a title shot. That's real. That's real talk. Fifty eight, fifty six burns. OK, fifty nine, fifty five. Yay, non. 
and your winner by split decision. <laughs> well, check the box. You was right, D Ray. Raymond Yenong. Good fight, though. Good fight, for sure. So, as I was saying, you know, Joshua Greer was supposed to face, you know, Jason Maloney, who's fighting tonight. It would have been a very good matchup for Greer. Definitely, um, Maloney has 17 knockouts, but I don't think it would have been much of a problem for Greer as uh, Mike Planilla was when he faced him because he definitely showed that he wasn't afraid of Greer's power early and he was able to get the knockdown in the first round. So that left hook, man, it just came out of nowhere. He, he hit that left hook very, very well. And when he basically executed it, it was with lethal intentions and he was able to get two knockdowns with the same shot in the first round and the sixth round. But I think Joshua Grill would have matched up real good with Jason Maloney, man. It, it, that's just a turn of the dial, man. Sometimes you get what you want, sometimes you don't. But either way, you know, Joshua Greer finished the fight very um, strong. There's a lot of holding by Planilla in the, in the later rounds. But, hey, this boxing. Um, you got to depend sometime on the third man in the ring, the referee. But also, you, you the boxer, you have to go in there and make sure you – you don't leave it in the hands of the judges and make it a close fight. But shout out to Josh Greer. Don't blink junior, man. You'll be back. I want to give a shout out to Carlos Jackson too, man. Um, he's definitely going to be, um, you know, on the fight card at top rank. S same place as you see him right now. At the MGM Grand. Him and his team should be moving out. Shout out to Coach Philippe. He's going to be contending in the Super Bantamweight Affair. 16 and 0, man. He's going in there against Jose Vivas. You know? And Jose is 18 and 1, man. 10 knockouts. Carlo is 16 and 0 with 11 knockouts. It's going to be a good fight, man. You know, this is the fight Carlo's been waiting for. A uh, step up fight. He's, he's always in shape. He's ready, and this is the fight. This is definitely what he's been looking for, man. So they've been working hard over there cooking in the gym, man. I just can't wait. I can't wait, man. Alida Alvarez. Alida Alvarez, that fighter right there, Mike Seals, he trains down here in Atlanta. Robisi, Ramirez, July 2nd. Dang, Gerard Anderson is, is turning back around and fighting July 9th. Okay. Jared Anderson, man, he, he he's trying to get that record right, man. Go get that um, Jared Anderson. Stay active as possible, man. Go in there and get your name. You know, let the fight fans see who you are, man. Okay. Club hell.
Okay. I'm going to put the thumbnail back up there. Eleven and zero. All right. So as I was saying about Tyson Fury, why they have a break? Um, Tyson Fury is set to. Tyson Fury is set for a trilogy with Deontay Wilder sometime down the near future. Whenever that fight is basically um, made official. And, you know, being it was pushed back due to COVID-19. Um, what I'm hearing from Tyson Fury, man, you know, is the fact that um, now he's going in on Anthony Joshua, a person that he, he really haven't had any um, beef with. You know, um, Anthony Joshua was calling him up tomorrow. If you need any help, you know, for me, you know, the train and your rematch with Deontay Wilder, I'm all cool for it. So I said to myself, F F of course, I was like, man, that's kind of a bitch move, you know, to go up here and try to put the tweet out there. Even though if Anthony Joshua was just trolling, you know, it's just the fact that why would you try to help somebody that you won't fight yourself? Like, how can you help Tyson Fury? who I believe that would defeat Joshua if they ever fought, period. That's what I believe. So for Joshua to reach out and say, you know, Tyson Fury, if you need help sparring for Deontay Wilder, we good. But now that Tyson Fury's won the WBC, um, you know, he's going to Anthony Joshua. And, and, and whether it's genuine or not, you got to understand Tyson Fury is a mouthpiece. Whenever he wants to get behind the mic, man, he does so. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, um, when it comes down to it, for them to sit up here and say, well, we just agreed on a two-fight deal as if Deontay Wilder is an easy touch, I think it was ill-advised. You feel me? But now he's trying to say that Anthony Joshua turned down $80 million for two fights. You know, I can care less what Anthony Joshua turned down because I still look back at the fact when, you know, Deontay had his WBC belt, you all could have just as well stepped in the Wem Wembley Stadium September 22nd, but you didn't have permission from Daddy Hearns. You didn't have permission. You could have just as well stepped in the um, Wembley Stadium with one of the biggest fights of boxing for all the titles on the line and really took a risk against one of the hardest punchers in boxing. You could have did that, Anthony Joshua, but you couldn't because Eddie Hearns had the disown deal pending. He probably didn't have confidence in you um, basically winning that fight. You know what I'm saying? Even, you know, Deontay accepting the 12 and the 15 million flat fee and all that other um, bogus-ass offers you was making. You couldn't do it. You didn't have permission. And it would have been, it would have been a heck of a freaking matchup. It would have been a way for us to see the best fight the best without all the red tape in between. We could have seen two heavyweights fight for the undisputed title and could have shook things up. But of course, when you're not in control of your decisions, you know what I'm saying? You're you're the co, you know, you're not even the co. You're like, you're riding in the back seat. So you really can't make a decision on, on if you wanted to fight Wilder since you signed the two-fight Wembley deal and you was able to step in there with Alexander Povekian on the September 22nd. But the April 13th date just came and went. So it was a waste of fucking time in the media with people boasting you up, saying, oh, he has two-fight Wembley deal. But as I back up again, when you was in negotiation with Wilder, y'all were saying that September Wembley Stadium was off. A September fight date was off. It was no way, 
you know, it's no way um, you all can make that fight date. There was no way you can do it. It was off. And then when the WBA came out and talking about, you know, Joshua has to face his mandatory or else be stripped of the WBA title, then what happened? September pops up. You got a two-fight Wembley deal. One of the dates is September 22nd in Wembley Stadium. You end up fighting Alexander Povekian, which you didn't sell out the arena. And really, it wasn't that exciting of a fight. You know, Alexander Povekian, a repeat drug, drug cheat, Decent boxer. He came in there and gave Anthony Joshua a hard time early on, and then he ended up stopping him. Joshua ended up stopping Fevekian. But what about the fight with Deontay Wilder? If you're going to ask for $50 million and then turn it down, man, you're the biggest ducker in boxing, bro. Anthony Joshua. He's the biggest, he's the biggest ducker in boxing, period. Tyson Fury has did what Anthony Joshua should have done. He came over to the U.S. and he has fought in the U.S. Joshua came over to the U.S. and failed. He failed miserably. So with all the discontent that's been floating around for Deontay Wilder, who stepped in here and fought Tyson Fury, who a lot of people consider the best heavyweight because they don't like Deontay Wilder, they say, hey, you got to get Deontay Wilder for fighting him twice already the next fight is on deck uh, i'm a kim c fan okay man i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out you know like why you became a fan all of a sudden you're supposed to like it for the sport man um i would take whitaker but it's a 50 50 fight Belarus. Panning from Belarus. Okay, I got you. I got you. You say you're going for Whitaker 13 and 3, three knockouts. Look, look like a um, you know, look like Chop Chop Curly. You, you know, Chop Chop in the building, man. Salute to you. You know, champ, salute to you. Panning looked like, um, can you hurry up and get this fight, man? Because I really I really need to get back to the hotel and play video games. You know, he looked a little bit disinterested, but he may be he, he may be down, man. Is that who I think it is in the middle of the ring? Is that Kenny Bayless? Is that the same one that was in the ring February 22nd? Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. And, 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 and sitting up there letting Tyson Fury just freaking make this a division, division one wrestling match. Okay, let's get it. Okay, panning with the double jab. Okay. Whitaker, Whitaker, you know, um, fainting a little bit. I wouldn't say showboating, but, you know, just trying to get a reaction. Both of them, both of them you know, put, putting together some nice shots early. Jab by um, Whitaker. A lot of feints by both fighters. I like that. I like that stiff jab, man. That step in jab, that lead jab, man. I like that from from Whitaker. He's going to the body. Nice combination by Whitaker. This is a six round fight, y'all. Welterweight division. But the way, you know, the weight was 149 for both fighters. Oh, nice one, two by Panning. Very sharp, quick. 
Another three punch combination landing by Penny. He's looking punctual early. There you go. Whitaker has to get in close that distance. You know, pan and return, you know, put the jab in Whitaker's face. I like Whitaker's head movement. You know, let's see if he's just filling out pan and, you know, trying to get his timing down just a little bit. It's not like he's just standing there. Nice patience by Panning. Nice double, double way to double up on that jab, Whitaker. Whitaker just a little bit wild, you know, with that combination. Finishing up with a, um, a wild sweeping left hook that missed. Oh, nice solid right by Whitaker. That's the most solid punch of the fight right there. That was nice. Like it. That's on the first round, so it got to get better. Let's turn the page to the second. That's got to get better. Yeah. It's, it's going to get better, no doubt about it. Tay Jones in the building. Salute to you. I ain't see you over here on Facebook. Shout out to everybody that's tuning in from Facebook, streaming via World Combat Sports YouTube channel, live on YouTube. The fight that's everybody, you know, looking forward to in anticipation is Abraham Nova and Avery Sparrow. You know, contending at the junior lightweight division, 10 rounds of action. That's what a lot of people are looking forward to, you know, before the main event of Jason Maloney and Leonardo Baez. Mm, both fighters landed at the same time. Nice. You know, you don't see that often, man. That would have been a good photo. God damn it. Wish I was ringside for some shots, man. Damn, get some steals. Shit. Man, that would have been a nice photo steal right there. That would have been nice. No fighter at this point between Panning and Whitaker is, is um, gaining the momentum just yet. But when it comes down to it, it's a, it's a, it's a very entertaining fight so far. Both fighters are boxing. Pannon, you know, just a little bit um, advantage in height. Not too much. It really don't matter. You know, Willick has been doing pretty decent. Stepping in with the and doubling up with the um, jab. Pannon stepping in with the right. Miss with the left. I like what I'm seeing from Willicker, man. Doubling up on the jab, coming with the right. Trying to seal it up on the way out. Tight jab by Whitaker. Nice head movement. Defense is also a key component. Nice to slip that punch, man. This is definitely boxing. Some chess. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're absolutely thinking in there, man. Oh, nice counter left by Pannon, man. Nice counter left. I was just about to say, Whitaker has his hands down. So, you know, Pannon does keep, has his right hand up. But still, you know, Whitaker, both his hand is, is is waist level right now. I mean, that's his groove, man. That's what he feels comfortable. 
He did land the left. Good movement by Panning. Nice exchange by both fighters to end the end the second round. Nice exchange. Orlando Gonzalez is next. You know, this it's it's a lot of hype behind this cat. Somebody bet 192 to win 14K. Damn. By the way, that's not my bet. I know a lot of y'all thought that was my bet, but it's not. Third frame with a converse panning. One forty nine weight limit. There's been some nice exchanges between these two. Um, I think more so the um the most memorable moments just far, I would say panning. You know, as far as you know the shots he's landed. But nothing serious, though. It's just been a back and forth boxing match. You know, nothing serious. Thinking man's game tonight between these two. No one really have, have taken any risk um, when they did land. If you saw in the first round, both fighters landed at the same time. Which rarely happens in the sport of boxing. But they both landed. Nice jab by Whitaker. He needs more of that. He needs more of that. Where's that head movement you had earlier, man? Get back to it. Clash of heads. Clash of heads. Seem to be okay. I like the foot movement of Whitaker, you know. Nice stiff jab. I like what Timothy Bradley is saying, you know, you're not going to win a fight fighting on the um, outside in this particular case. In this particular matchup. That was a nice right left by Whitaker. Whitaker's trying to land without putting himself in a predicament. And I, I get it. But maybe you need to shoot with a different angle because you know how he's just, you see how he's just standing flat footed and he's firing off that right hand and he's kind of doing like, you know, um, um, Yanon was doing last fight before he made the adjustment. He was just standing a little flat footed and Burns was able to just slip the punch just by moving his head back slightly. Nice left hand by Whitaker. Nice left hand. But I'm, I'm not sure Whitaker has the power to do any damage unless he lands more, you know, in the exchange. When he's able to land that, any shot, his power shots, he need to follow it up. He just can't win. You know, he, he just can't land one power shot and then keep it moving. Who y'all think winning the fight so far, man?
This is the fourth round. So far, man, it's an okay fight. They're boxing. We're still coming off a long layoff, so you're going to expect fight cards like this. And you're going to expect bouts like this. But they are staying um, decently active, you know what I'm saying? Oh, nice, solid shot by both fighters, man, by Panning and Whitaker. Very solid. Oh, Panning staying in there this time. He's staying, he's staying in there. He, he didn't abort the mission. I guess his corner says, shit, you can get this guy up out of here. You can you can deliver you know, some pretty decent damage if you just stay in close. They probably ask him, okay, how's Whitaker Power? Oh, nice shot by Whitaker. A little bit off balance. I like Whitaker doubling up on that jab. Very solid contest right here, man. Both fighters. Neither one of them are, are like establishing and taking the lead. You know, um, if I had to give anybody right now this fight, I would have to say that Panning may be leading slightly, 30 seconds approaching. Whitaker, when he's standing there flat footed and try to counter Panning, it's not good. You know, you, you gotta you gotta move, man. You got the head movement like you was doing in the first round, man. You can't let him get off and land three jabs to you like that. Nice right hand by Panning. There you go, Wilker. Sealing the envelope with that left hook out the pocket. Like it. Appreciate everybody for stopping through, man. Definitely. I'm going to come back on. I'm going to come back on the um, scene, man, when we get up to the Lando Gonzalez fight. That's an eight rounder. You know what I'm saying? I know that fight is going to be absolutely fire. From Orlando Gonzalez all the way up to Jason Maloney um, versus Leonardo Baez, man, for the main event. You know what I'm saying? I think those three fights right there is going to set the night off so we can sleep real nice bringing in this friday you feel me they're boxing fans you feel me you know i mean world combat sports live and also i have to tell you that you know the big card is coming up i will be covering that next week nice left hook by panning See, you know, Whitaker allows Panning, you know, just build up that confidence early. This is the fifth round, and it's a and it's a very um, important round for Whitaker. They kind of change the rhythm a little bit, change the momentum, because Panning's been able to land pretty solid on him, man. He got to if he can't if he can't change another gear at least. You know, um, give him different angles or something. You know, just give him a different look. Don't stand directly in front of Panning because he's a taller fighter. I like I like the head movement of Panning. Solid right hand by Whitaker. He needs more of that. 
He's sending singles down the pipe. He need more. He need a barrage, man. He need he need the you know punches and bunches. See what Pannon is doing. He's able to land more than one punch. And oh, and though and those are effective punches so far, man. Obviously, you know, Whitaker is feeling it. He's not taking as much risk as staying in the pocket and trying to exchange with Panning. Panning is now measuring real nice, man, when he steps in with his combinations. He's stepping in just enough to keep Whitaker on the end of his gloves, man. Doing a good job with that. Both fighters land that right hand again at the same time. What y'all think about the fight so far, man? Talk to me. Talk to me, fight fans. What y'all think about the fight so far? It said, um, D-Ray said, good fight coming down to the last, last round. It's, it's, it's a pretty decent fight. It's a pretty decent fight. They're boxing. I can give them that. As you see, you know, the fight cards with the names aren't as heavy as we would like, right? But as you're seeing in these fights, though, they're, they're, they're picking up. They're, you know, the fighters are coming in there, and, it, and they're not just, you know, backyard-type fights. They're not easy early outs. They're coming in here and boxing, man, you know. It may be some guys who wouldn't get exposure if boxing never would have had a shutdown, but they're doing what they're doing, man. Nice, solid left hand by Whitaker, man. Like I said, he needs more of that. He needs more of that. There you go. I mean, you wait to the to the last round to, to finally turn up, man. Come on, man. You got you got to give repetition. Return that shit. Yeah, more body shots, man. See, that's what I'm talking about, man. When he, he does step in, man, that left right by Whitaker is very effective. Now he went back to his head movement. See, that's that's what I'm saying. Very nice. He's able to push Panning back to the ropes. But if he's not able to do anything spectacular, man, it's still going to be a close fight that he may lose. You know what I'm saying? Minute 45 remaining in the fight. This is the last fight. Will it could turn up? What are they saying? Whitaker could have had more success. Exactly. Solid, solid analysis, man. Somewhat the same what I was saying. Solid analysis, man, Timothy. Forty-four seconds. I don't know if Whitaker did enough in this last round. You know, he's showing that he can he can push Panning back 
if he lands more than one power shot and then where his placement of that shot is look at those body shots those body shots are effective for Whitaker and you can't tell me panic panning is not filling them oh shit Whitaker was left his feet on those jabs man come on he levitated on those jabs he threw two jabs man and, and left the and left the mat that's not enough. I don't think it's enough for Whitaker to win, to be honest. Good fight, though. You know, you know, it wasn't a bad fight. It wasn't a bad fight, but I think Panning pulled it off. I'd be surprised if, if, if they give it to Whitaker. Let's see what the copy box, copy box um, numbers look like. Mm. Wow, those are the best shot of the fight right there. Both fighters land at the same time. Amazing. Amazing. They landed there too, but not at the same time, not simultaneously. Boom. It is hard to judge. 282 for um Whitaker. Thrown by 246. Okay, landed 65 for um Whitaker and 44 for Panning. So we'll see what the judges think. 18 body shots by Whitaker, 12 by Panning. We'll see what they're talking about, though. They go Abraham Nova. Abraham Nova, let's see what it do. Them Philly fighters, hey, <laughs> them Philly fighters, man. Shout out to Stitch Duran, man. From the fields to the garden, check his book out, From the Fields to the Garden. And, you know, check out my interview I did with Stitch Duran in Florida. You know, I I could have I could have just retired after that. I, I got to interview a legend in Stitch Duran, man. One of the legends. Good dude. That's what I told you. I told you they was gonna give it to a freaking panty. What y'all think about that decision, man? Do you think, um, you know, Panning should have won it? Did they get it right? I think they got it right. To be honest, I think they got it right. What I was saying about Tyson Fury, though, is the fact that, you know, he's going in on Joshua. And then, um, you know, he want to say that Deontay Wilder at one point in time, you know, was the easiest fight. And then now he's giving him credit for being the toughest fight of his career. And then turn around and say Deontay Wilder would destroy Dillian White, which, you know, I've been saying that forever in a day. And that fight right there do pretty decent. A lot, you know, people are tuning in a, a decent number of people would tune in to see Deontay Wilder fight Dillian White. But that fight is so far down the road. But um, whoever Dillian White fights, you know, outside Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, I, I, <laughs> if you want to tune in, tune in. You know what I'm saying? But Dillian White set himself up, man, to be the puppet. He never should have campaigned outside of the titles being right there at his doorstep. You know what I'm saying? He's been hoping to get this WBC title so he can have the ultimate freaking connect with fighting for the undisputed titles if Joshua still had, you know, those titles over there. But, man, he just went about it the wrong way, man. You know, Dillian White is the Rodney Dangerfield of boxing, unfortunately. 
He is, man. He's he's right in the danger field of boxing, man. You go in there against Joshua, you get knocked out in the seventh. Um, you know. That's Jason Maloney talking. Okay. I hear you. D-Ray said he had it a draw. Oh, yeah. These next three fights are going to be good, man. Orlando Gonzalez, 14 and 0, 10 knockouts, clean. His record is clean right now. He got the top ranked jacket on. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get hot. Turn up. This is the opportune time for another upset. Orlando Sharp, man. Unblemished. I like that. I like that jacket he got on. You know, I like. I like his suit, man. You know. Fifteen and fifteen wins, two losses, eight KOs. Okay. It's from Ecuador, Peroso. Gonzalez against Peroso. Let's get it. Seemed like he was talking strictly to Peroso on those rapid punches. <laughs> we'll see. We had the third fight heading to the top. We have two more fights after this. This is a scheduled eight round affair. Already, I like what I'm saying. Southpaw Gonzalez. Peroso Orthodox. Okay, steps in with a body shot. A lot of fame from both fighters early. Filling out process, as they call it. Let's get it. Oh, man, Peroso land the right hand early on Gonzalez. He took it well, though. Another right hand. Gonzalez definitely, you know, he's feeling that glove right now, that right glove of Peroso. He doesn't seem like it affected him too much, but right now, as, as a little bit, you know, he's just right outside the range that he needs to be. That's all. It's still early. It's the first, it's the first round of eight, you know. Oh man, Peroso landed a nice left hand there on the you know counter left hand as Gonzalez decided to step in. Sharp right so far. Another two punches landed. Gonzalez is gonna have to move his head a little bit. He's just standing there, postured up, man, with his hand. You just can't you just can't be that guy right now. Obviously, you you finding out the data that you're getting back that Peroso is game. He's pretty sharp right now. But you're an undefeated fighter, Gonzalez. Move your head. Left hand by Gonzalez. Nice, nice defense by Peroso. 
I like what I'm seeing on the pivot out. I like what I'm seeing. Hey, Peroso is sharper on those shots, man. I mean, he's not just wasting energy right now. On the eight round, good defense. He's in the corner. Let's see what Gonzalez can do with it. Gonzalez land that left hand up top. Man, that right hand is just got got his own stamp on it right now. Two punch combination by Peroso. First round Peroso is easy. Easy first round for Peroso. This is an eight round affair, so I'm pretty sure Gonzalez being, you know, both fighters are going to make changes or whatever. But I like what I was seeing from Peroso early um, with the undefeated fighter. You know, Gonzalez standing directly center center mass, man, for him to land that that um, right hand early. But expect, I would assume, Gonzalez to pick up the pace a little bit. D-Ray, appreciate the input, man. You know, on, on, on the fights that's going on, appreciate that. Anybody else is um, tuning in, you know, drop your comments in the live chat, man. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're thinking. Second round of an eight round fight. I like what I'm saying with Peroso, man. How he's shutting down. He's making the space limited. The space he's keeping, man, is to his benefit. I like how he's calibrating his space early, landing those um, effective shots. And he's not just firing off one shot at a time, man. He's he's throwing combinations. Gonzalez really haven't, you know, fired the cylinder firing up the cylinders yet. I think Peroz is just a little bit more active than what he thought. He's still just, you know. Taking that data, <laughs> you know, trying to get the timing down. Oh, man, he just missed with that that right hand and then tried to come over there with that left hook. That, that Gonzalez, there you go. See, you see how Peroso is, is, is basically, he's fighting short. You know what I'm saying? The way he's, he's bending over and leaning down, he, he, he's planting his feet. But yet he's moving. You know what I'm saying? Like he's really fighting short. He, he ain't fighting tall. He, he's just. He's fighting extremely low. He feel comfortable doing that. He's been he's been pretty solid thus far. See how he steps in with that right hand. I mean, he's not setting it up. Some sometime he does. Sometime he don't. But he's still landing it. Gonzalez really haven't did anything about it so far. He haven't made that shit a no fly zone yet. It's the second round approaching 40 seconds. Um, you know, Gonzalez need to understand that. And, um, you know, I'm not saying he doesn't understand that. Obviously, he's he's undefeated. It's an eight round fight, so. I like what I'm seeing so far from Peroso from Belarus. Oh, nice shot by Gonzalez. There you go. That's that undefeated. That's that. That's that. That that skill set coming through. Caught him with the counter. Got the knockdown. So 
That's what I'm talking about, man. Good shot by Gonzalez. That's what he needed. Solid, solid shot by Gonzalez. He was being patient, taking his time, I guess. He was just worn up. Hey, he was just worn us to sleep, man. Just like shit. No crowd in here. I'm gonna take my time. I'm not in a rush. I'm not about to be Andrew Maloney. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna let Maloney. That left hand right off the top of the forehead, man. Slightly over near the temple. And Gonzalez, like, yep. Ah. Uh, very nice. Nice shot. He said, I'm sending you to the mail room. He go the stamp you was looking for. Just third frame. Let's get it. Now, now Gonzalez comes out. He land that left hand. He's 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 dropped my um Peroso. Peroso understands he can be hurt by Gonzalez now. He's got to be smarter with his defense, man. Can't get reckless and just stay in the pocket too long and, and admire your work. You got to get in, get out, partner. Get in, get out. Peroso can still win this fight if he stays active. He just got a little sloppy and, 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 and stayed wide open for the counter. Now Gonzalez got the knockdown. His confidence is up. Gonzalez say, it looked like I'm not doing much, but I am. Left hand by Gonzalez to the solar plex. Peroso really haven't changed, you know, keeping his hand up. He's still fighting very short, you know, in a crotch stance. That's that's what makes him feel comfortable, but his head is wide open. It's, it's extremely wide open. You can't get any more open than that. Oh, man, Gonzalez landed slightly. Gonzalez landed slightly with that left hand on the way in the door. Peroso goes back to the body. You can tell Peroso is a, is, is a slick fighter. You know, he, you know, that's the way he practices, the way he stands it. He's not just doing it for this fight. That's just the way he's his comfort zone. And, and you know, boxing never has a template, people. That's why I try to tell people. You, you can't sit up here and say, you know, one fighter is terrible and look this way. And then you get a fighter like, you know, Peroso fight with his hands down by his waist, you know, bends his knees really places yourself as a disadvantage instead of just fighting tall. But, you know, that's his comfort zone, people. What y'all think about this fight so far, man? I like it. It has a lot of intrigue to it. You got two fighters this game. You already had an early knockdown. But yet, you know, when you look at Peroso, man, um, he has a slick fighting style. Even though it's what a, a lot of people wouldn't teach in the sport of boxing, lowering yourself down um, b beneath your opponent's, your, um, your measuring stick to your opponent's chin. 
you know, he seems to feel, you know, good about that. And he even, he even sends his jab from that position. He was quick early on, but once again, you know, some of these fighters even had a, um, a good fight camp. They might have had a good fight camp, and some of them haven't. But tonight, it seemed like the cardio has been pretty decent besides the heavyweight fight. And um, the one with Clay Burns, you know, Clay Burns and Raymond y y Yanung. Perosa back to the right, left. You know, going to the body. This is the fourth, fourth frame of an eight-round fight. And I, I might be remiss not to say that um, Perosa get caught again. His hands are extremely down. And Gonzalez's hands are up. So the direction. There you go. Nice, solid left, right on Peroso by Gonzalez. He's warming up, man. He's warming up. It seems like he's trying to put on that stray jacket on freaking Peroso. He's trying to tie him up. Look, look, look how look look how low Peroso ducks to, to throw that jab up the middle. Nice right hand, you know, a little bit off balance by Gonzalez. Nothing, nothing too serious, bro. I'm telling you, Peroso ended up catching him with that right hand that was effective early. We'll see. But I doubt it. I like Gonzalez's patient. You know, very methodical in, in, in his game plan. I would say educated, you know. He knows where he want to go with the fight. But Peroso is a bit unpredictable, erratic at times. And he's not the slowest fighter. He has pretty good speed. Any fighter to come in with a haircut like that, they have to have some type of mystery to them, some type of suspense. Peroso getting a little bit sloppy. Oh, nice combination right there. I like where he was closing in on that combination. Good job. Good job. See a little Pinnell Whitaker right there. And check this out. Look how smooth Gonzalez, cut, Gonzalez cuts off the ring. Very, very smooth. Peroso trying to steal the final seconds of the round. But I like how he's cutting off the ring, though. Um, these last two round, rounds are crucial. What y'all think, man? Let's go, man. Turn up, man. What's good? Man, drop your comments in the live chat. And for those of you that's tuning in to World Combat Sports live commentary, yeah, I definitely have some um, mixed martial arts commentary that's coming up and hopefully a couple of interviews for you all. I got to make my own phone calls to try to make this happen. But if y'all just sit tight, I truly appreciate it. Uh, when I put the reminder out there, hey, set the reminder notifications, man. Tune in. If you're a boxing head, and you want to learn something about mixed martial arts, let me allow you to be that, that um, outlet or that segue for you to come over here and learn about mixed martial arts. I've been, look, I've been in the game since it started. I've been following the sport since it started. Not, I ain't talking about just the UFC. I'm talking about when grappling was actually going down. Fifth round. Peroso starts to fight like he always do, you know, a combination early. Low blow. So it's going to take a timeout. Gonzalez, you know, took, you know, gave him a little one below the belt line a little bit. Just give him a shot of Hennessy. He'll be good. Somebody get that man some Hennessy, goddammit. 
It don't matter wh which label it is. Just get them some Hennessy. Oh yeah, that was a that was an unfreaking believable, like obvious low blow. Come on, people. I need some. I need some. Some some scholars. I need for you. I need to get educated. Like that's what I expect, man. Drop some input. Awesome shot for Peroso. See, Peroso has his moments where he can be extremely deleterious to his um, punching cachet, but he don't do it enough. Yes, he got caught for being wild and leaving his and leaving his whole guard open, you know, swinging wildly, trying to admire his work. You cannot do that with a fighter like Gonzalez. But this is the fifth round out of eight, right? Nice combinations, nice punches up top by Gonzalez. Peroso took him well. Man, it'd be amazing if he can just, you know, get in with those combinations, shift to a different point, and then shoot those combinations again. Oh, good combination by Peroso. And he's not really even moving in and stepping off to the side or nothing, man. Like, he's doing this in front of him. He's dancing right now. Hands down by his knees, y'all. Gonzalez landed a left hand, but it was off the glove of um, Peroso. So uh, it's been a good round for Peroso so far. 50 seconds remaining. Oh, nice right hand. Peroso scoring. Oh, nice left hand after the two. Peroso is sharp when he want to be. If he don't park in the corner... And allow Gonzalez to the the park bench him and put him on Facetime. He good. Continue to move and you're straight. You'll win this fight. Get out the way, ref. Before you get put time time out, man. I have to come up there and substitute. Goddamn. Shit, I'm on, I'm back in the back room now. Told you to get him some Hennessy when he got a little blow so he can feel good going back into the round. You know, once the fight start, I didn't even see you even goddamn in a rush to get that shit for him. D Hodges, what's good? Salute. Thanks for chopping in, man. P is winning. Yeah, I think Peloso has been doing good, man. I, I, as much as I want to say that he has a possibility of taking this O. He does. He has a possibility of taking the O. But once again, protecting these fighters with these undefeated records, man, we'll see how it goes, man. Peroso is looking sharp. Oh, yeah. I agree with that, Hodges. If not for the knockdown, he'll be winning. I agree, man. I think he's he's had his points. But when he does get in close to the body, glove to glove, you know, you have to score those fights as landing. Gonzalez coming out, you know, landing the first first blood of the round. Oh, look at that right hand pop the head back of Gonzalez. Nice, solid. Superb, shawty. Superb. I like the crouching style. I like the crouching, the 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 crouching style, man. Of Peroso from Belarus. Gonzalez with another low blow, rough. You better take a point. You better take a point right now. Else, I'm, I'm the hit squad. Is on, you, you didn't hit him low again, did you? Did you, Gonzalez? This is six, the sixth frame out of eight round fight, man. Let's get it. Gonzalez need to speed it up. Damn, nice two punch combinations, man. 
He's getting off on he's getting off on him, man. Peroso is getting off on this kid. You might need to break protocol, homie. Gonzalez, you, you might need to bro break protocol and go to tactic plan Bravo Charlie. Well, a bit more of the protocol you're used to practicing in the gym is out the window. You need to kind of switch it up. Abort the motherfucking mission, Alpha, and implement Green Up, Bravo, and Charlie. <laughs> How do you say Bradley sucks at commentary? He tells people that he wouldn't do. <laughs> and nobody, it, no, nobody is, it, is not paying a, a, attention, but they hear his voice. They're not really paying attention and taking it to the heart. But I had to give Bradley his respect, man. You know, Bradley is a tough fighter, man. So I also have to look at the fight. Some, some of the things Bradley say may be, still be a residual effect when he he fought Provotnikov, um, that shit was just oh my god. That shit was just very. What you doing, Pro, um, Peroso? You ain't won the fight yet, man. Twenty seconds remaining. Nice jab. Look how you, you know, he fires his jab from his knees, man. I mean, that's something he's been doing in the gym and doing in life, in his experience in boxing for quite some time. He's firing off a jab from his knee, and he's landing it. It's quick enough to get through the guard of Gonzalez. And I, I like to see those different little weapons that these fighters have. But when you are firing a jab from your knees, Anybody got bets on this fight, man? I'm going for Arrow, Avery Sparrow. 10 and 1, 3 knockouts. Abraham number 18 and 0, 14 knockouts. Anyone want to put some um a cheddar, but much, much, much better on the ledger? What are we looking like? I know if you in here, I know you got to have some pockets. Y'all seem like y'all sip on that, that aged wine that, you know, you have to ask them to go to the back and get the key for the damn shelf to take it out. I know that's what type of people y'all are, man. Y'all getting ready for the weekend, too. You probably already cracked the bottle. Damn, I already got no bet heading to the weekend. I'm just trying to get a little bit of extra money, you know. For pre-flight, you know, go to the restaurant, then head out to Mike um, Charlie, a.k.a. Magic City. But, you know, see, they might be still shut down from the COVID. I don't know. I'm definitely not going there being a mask. Peroso got to bring this home. Baby, you got to bring this home, baby boy. You got to bring this home. Keep your head movement. There you go. Keep dancing with him. Was that a low blow? Why you why you keep pretending? Are you for real? Or you, are you are you are you sitting up here acting, dog? It looked like a low blow from up here. That's a panoptic shot. We need we need ground level shot. I agree, man. Third low blow. Got down one point. Take that shit. Take that. He was good as a fighter. Can't take that away, but he talks about ducks. 
but he ducks a lot. <laughs> okay, three punch combination off the gloves. You know, throw some shots, man. The, the referee haven't broke you up yet. Damn, throw some hooks on the outside. He'll never see him coming being that close. Okay, that's been two sets of combinations, and Gonzalez haven't did anything. He threw two sets of combinations. Gonzalez did nothing. So where does the the sense of urgency come in at? Fifty seconds remaining. I mean, Peroso looks like he just steps in with the one-two man, and you know, and then he stays there. He's not even really getting out once he's in there. He knocked this dude down again with a body shot, yo. Man, this is weird. I thought he got hit with a... What we can say about Gonzalez is he's very um, concealed in pulling out his... Pulling out his weapons for destruction. He's very, very concealed. Very secret. Metallico had, uh, Peroso has two knockdowns, and that may seal the deal for him. That may have done, that may have sealed the deal. This is the eighth and final frame. That's, 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 that's about it. Unless freaking Peroso come up here, and it's not going to happen. I don't see Peroso getting another knockdown. I don't, I don't see it. Um, good body shot. Yeah, solid body shot, man. Absolutely a stinger. A zinger. It's closer now. Shaking my head. It is. I'm, I'm trying to find out, like, what rounds. What? Straight to the liver. Damn. I'm ready to see Abraham Logan, period. It was a good fight, fellas. You did your thing. Let me see if, you know, Peroso is just going to put it all on the line right now. What we call a front, a front line assault. Gonzalez is the one that's acting like he's losing. He may know something we don't. He's meeting him coming in, Gonzalez. He ain't waiting around. See, I like how um, Peroso just circled out that, that corner and reset. I like that. Keep landing the shots to the body and work on your jab. You can throw your jab from your hips and he seems not to see it. It's right there for you. Pop the jab up the middle there, Peroso. You're waiting too much on the, on the ropes. A minute 45 remaining in the fight. Pop that jab out there. Okay, he went with the right. He sent the right instead of the left that time. Try to send that left and the right, man. It always lands. It has good attendance. Minute 20 remaining in the fight. Let's go, big dog. Let's go. Try the, uh, the left hook on the counter. Try to check out, as we call it. See how, how you throw that jab out there? The shit's landing, man. And then all those shots Gonzalez just threw did not land. That jab was nice. I ain't going to lie. Look at that shit. Down by his freaking waist. Oh! What? Come on, ref.
What? He hurt his hand. The fight almost over. It's 33 seconds. You got this, Peroso. Just fight with one hand. God gave you two. Fight with one, bruh. He took a knee already. What? 21 seconds, man. Somebody let that man know how long he has left. Oh, nice, nice. I don't know. This, this is a funny card. I mean, this is a funny fight right here. So, two knockdowns. And then we have to look at the other outside collective scoring. Yeah, it could be two. I have Louise for the win. Okay, D Ray. I mean, D Ray, you already won and know the night. So let's see if you get two and no. You get two and oh, you get a WBC 7 Eleven, um, 10 Diamond Special, trinket material, um, attached with two Hershey's bars, a bag of Skittles, and one drink of your choice as a, um, a care package. And yeah, that's what you get. You go two old tonight, you definitely get a belt. And of course, it's not big enough to wear around your waist. It's just one that you can just hang on the wall. And then periodically, if you want to snatch snatch the Hershey, um, Hershey bar off or, you know, eat the Skittles, you can. But that's just attachment that comes in with the belt. I think I know for a fact I'm going to start having some trivia that, you know, we we'll give out some cash prizes via Cash App. It's going to be some trivia. But I'm not going to do it until I get around 9 or 10. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hand out some trivia. And, and it ain't going to be no small damn monetary trivia. The question, you're going to have to know the channel to answer those questions. You're going to have to know boxing to answer these questions. And believe me, you'll get your money. Because I'm going to say put your cash out. Where it's supposed to be, and I'm gonna send it to you. But I want to do some boxing. I want to do some boxing trivia, y'all. Yeah, I want to get some boxing trivia. Old school, new school. Boxing regulations and protocol. Yeah. Hey, figures. But shout out to Orlando Gonzalez with the win. 15 and 0 record. They're keeping that record nice and spotless. D Ray, unfortunately, I have to inform you that. One and one records don't cut it. And being that you weren't able to go two and oh consistently, sustaining your undefeated record, we won't be able to send you that WBC custom belt. But we can direct you to where you can pick up a Hershey's bar and Skittles. So if you need that information, just ask me and I can direct you to a local 7 Eleven or track. Or any type of local gas station. 
when there's a sale and you can pick it up on your own. But maybe next time we will still be working on, you know, some trivia in the near future, man. And it's going to be some legitimate trivia. It's going to be fun. The fight everybody's been waiting for is absolutely on deck. Nova versus Sparrow. Let's go. Let's go. Man, hell no. I think I freaking ran in the... Let me see. Who y'all know got a beard like that? Don't let me see you walking around, you know, after this fight. Y'all going up there saying, I want that, that Stardust special. First round knockout or not? Y'all calling it?
Sparrow, Sparrow and Nova is just sitting up here posing. Now he comes forward. He tried. He tried to knock the gold out that beard. This is a 10-round fight, too. They're just feeling each other out, dancing a little bit. Because look at Sparrow. Sparrow's throwing jabs. He's nowhere by the mailbox to ship him off. This is going to be a good fight. Nova able to get in with a couple of jabs. But Sparrow, he's, he's he's just still playing right now. You know, he's not even within range. He's just loosening up, I guess. Fifty-five seconds remain in the first round. Sparrow have me try to touch him up close. He's just been shadow boxing. Oh, nice. Sparrow landed that right hand to close the round, man. I see a lot of potential in this fight, man. Ten rounds. Yeah, I agree, man. Feeling that round? For sure, I agree. Sparrows look Sparrow look very easy going in this fight. He hadn't even began to spin up spin up yet. He's not even trying. He has some in store, in my opinion. That's the second time he landed that overhand right. That's straight right, brother. Oh, nice shot by Nova. Nice left hand by Nova.
Wow, right hand. I'm waiting for Sparrow to just get a little bit more discipline, tighten it up a little bit, and hopefully we see this in the third round because he's definitely too far on the outside, and he has to know that every time he throws a little jab out there, he's just going through the motions right now. He's not really trying to – it seems like he really ain't trying to show his hand just yet. He has a lot. Oh, he, oh, that's stepping up a cup. I, li I like that. That was slick. He caught Nova coming in, and he and he hit him with a right uppercut. What's going on, JC? How you feel, bro? Welcome to the um, welcome to the live chat, man. Salute to you. H money in the building, man. Mr. Zone, what's good? Would you would you shut shut down your live um early for man? I I went back over there and, you, and goddamn the lights was off. Either you had strippers up in there or you was goddamn, you know, you had some company. <laughs> Hard to say one and one. Yeah. Salute to everybody in the live chat, man. I appreciate y'all stopping through. Man, drop some comments in here, you know, so, you know, we can talk this boxing about anything you might see from the first cards already. What's going on, the brotherhood? Salute to you, man. Um, This is the um, Cobain event. Abraham Nova versus Avery Sparrow at the junior lightweight division. 131.9. You know, they give them, they're giving a little bit of pounds over. So with, with Avery Sparrow, man, you know, him stepping in the way he, he did, I believe the, th the third round is going to be where he starts to, you know, kind of close up a little bit so he can start landing that long jab of his. You know, I'm putting together some combinations because he feels very conf confident, man. Nova haven't really quite made him pay for anything just yet. I, I like his hands being up, but, you know, but right now I'm just waiting on Sparrow to knock the knock the gold dust off his beard. I, I just think something's telling me Sparrow has something in store for the mid rounds, man. There you go. There you go. Just what I said. That's the first combination we've seen him stick inside the pocket and land to the body and come up top. I like what I'm seeing with Sparrow, man. It looked like he's being nonchalant, but he's taking his time, man, on the clock. I'm telling you, I, I think the mid rounds is going to be crucial for Abraham Nova. Look, look how Sparrow just just faints. He just throws those those touch jabs out there. He's he's not even within within range. He's just doing it just for you know the hypnotize Abraham Nova. He ain't really trying to do it for nothing else. He ain't up knocking Nova out, man. Nova don't got damn pay attention. Hey, I appreciate the sub there, Brotherhood. Real talk. And I see a lot of y'all in other other um live chats. I just I just haven't attended. Um JC ba Baez for the upset. Man, I, mean, I hope I I hope I hope the Maloney brothers ain't up here reading these live chats. Else they they might need to be on suicide watch when it's all over with. Both of them brothers come to the US and lose. Man, it's gonna be a while before we see them come back over here. I like what I'm seeing from Sparrow though. But he ain't yet to spread his wings yet. So I'm I'm looking for him to come out in this next round and consistently start to pick it up. 
It seems like he has a lot left, man. Um, I heard it's hard for them trying to cut the last few pounds because they can't go anywhere. Oh, damn. Yeah, from what I'm hearing, they keep them in the bubble, man. And once they get tested, um, yeah, you you really are isolated. But, um, you know, the only thing, the only good outlook I can I can say is you get ready for the fight. You're good on weight. You know, being those day before, you eat right, unless you have a um a rehydration clause. And you go in there and um perform the best you know how. I was supposed to be up there next week, but I will have to I will have to be on lockdown and freaking take a COVID test and everything else. I was going out there to support one of my fighters down here in the A. Fly up to Vegas. So he caught him with that left hook, that lead left hook. Okay. Nova starting to dance a little bit, you know, starting starting to be a little bit quicker with his feet. Okay. Sparrow was trying to swing wildly with that right hand. He's tried that several times. It's only a matter of time before he get a little bit closer and, 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 and put that stamp on it. I'm not saying it's going to knock out Abraham, but when he did throw it, he was just a little bit short. I'm still waiting on some shining moments from Abraham Nova, though. When you come in with a gold beard, I'm expecting it to be infinity stones. Seriously, I'm expecting something to show me that you are on a different level with him, man. When you come in with a gold beard like that, okay, 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 Nova. That's what I'm talking about. That's solid. He picked up the pace. They got Sparrow up two rounds. That's what I'm talking about. Sparrow's, Sparrow is, I'm telling you, he, he's been he's been sleeping. Like, he's he's a cool, calm operator right now, man. The way he lands his punch combinations. Look how he just stay on the offside. He'll just pop, pop the jab out there when he feel like, okay, now he's on the end. He was able to add two punch combination to the body and, and no return from um, Nova. No return at all. He just allowed that man to walk in, do what he had to do, and leave. No repercussions. D. Hodges said two to one Nova cleaning um, punches. Shit, they just said Sparrow was up. The Hodges. They was just said Sparrow was up. But you never know what the judges. You never know what the judges, man. It would be good if they had open scoring. Hard to say 2-2 two, two now. <laughs> we got 20 seconds already. Well, you know, for the looks of it, it's, uh, Nova did win this. There you go. Nova with good defense, man, on the out. Yes, man. Dig to the body, come up top. He's very tight, though. Abraham Nova keeping a very tight freaking um, defensive perimeter up there. But I haven't really seen him get off, man. He looked like he got pretty decent speed. I just haven't seen him get off. Okay, cool. Let me see. So two two win. We're going into the fifth round. It's still a lot of time in this fight, and I think some changes. Uh, you know, the changes are going to take place. Fifth, six, and seven. I don't. I don't know, man. I kind of get this impression that. Avery Sparrow has a little bit more to offer, and he's kind of waiting on to the back end of this fight. 
I might be wrong, but it just seems like he has a lot more to offer. Starting off with the jab of Sparrow. I like it. See how he continues to try to, you know, send that overhand right over there to the to the um, left side of the head of Nova. He's trying. You can't knock him for trying, though. But he needs to get in much closer to make that happen. See how he throw that touch jab out there? He's way out of range. He's just he just like the be harmonized with saying pop, and he's nowhere within range to do that shit. Nice jab, though. Nice long jab. Those other two landed. Nice long jab. I tell people boxing don't have a template, man. Look at the hands of freaking Sparrow. Sometimes they at his waist. Sometimes they up. You know? But I would have to say Abraham Nova. You know, he's keeping his hand... Pr pretty much you know where it need to be framing up nicely sparrows just sitting up here firing off like four straight jabs even though they all miss it's the point he did it i'm telling you he got something in the bag man approaching a minute 25 left in the five um fifth round this jab all the sound effects. I'm just, I'm just understand. I'm not understanding why you're not turning the textbook, bro. Like you seem in pretty decent shape. Why are you driving in freaking first gear? This is going to the middle. This is in the middle of the fight. You should be in fifth, sixth gear already. You're out of range. What are you doing? Good jab by Nova. A lot of inactivity in this round. Nice combination. Nice combination by Sparrow. He needs more of that because he can land it. He can land it. If he gets off, man, and execute those combinations much more on a proficient proficiency, you know, um, he'll be able to score at will on Abraham. Because Abraham is like he's waiting for the counter. And sometimes Sparrow stand there um, posturing, and he's waiting on the counter. See how they both try to counter? That's not going to make good for a freaking fight going to the scorecards if you think you're going to win by a landslide. Let me see. I'm a little bit ahead. I'm at commercials next round starting. Shaking my hand, Nova ain't throwing nothing. Sparrow around. Yeah, a lot of people was kind of talking about Nova. Let me um Nova's 18 and 0. This is an 18 and 0 fighter fighting like this. You know what I'm saying? 18 and 0 fighter. And you know, looking at his records, he hasn't had many. None winning records as he continued to climb. He had one Milan Savic. Um, and that was it. I mean, dude's a pretty solid fighter. His first fight was a one and no fighter, and he never had a losing record of opposition again until that four and twenty three fighter. That's just one. So his last fight, Pedro Navarrete, he knocked out. Okay, let's see what's popping in this, though. What y'all think this fight looking like? Who's winning right now, man? And y'all tell me this. Why is Avery Sparrow popping out the jab in the, you know, called air, air jabs, touch jabs, whatever? And he's not really within range to do anything. Like, it seems like he's trying to get 
Abraham Nova in type of rhythm to look at his jabs all the time. And then when he actually start pressing the pressing the gas and getting in close. He's just in habit right now. Look how he just pops a jab out there and he's not even close enough to like touch him with it. There you go. Um, Nova is, is, is landing combinations on the counter. He's getting in closer now, going to the body. I like what I'm seeing with Nova. He's starting to pick it up and go to the body a little bit. Sparrow is just a smooth type of fighter, though. He, he seems like he's confident in there. See how he just pops that jab out of range? Harmonize it with a pop. See, he's no way even close, and he's not even firing off the right hand. Good defense just then. Good defense by Sparrow. Come on there, Abraham. You're an undefeated fighter, bro. You know what I'm saying? You ain't just undefeated. Man, you 18 and no 14 knockouts. That's just impressive right there. And you only have one losing record of opposition on your on your resume? Nice right hand by Sparrow. Sparrow is confident. He thought about throwing that right hand. Held back. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in this fight. Like, maybe it's going to close out in a different type of temperature. Because right now it's a little chilly. 3-3 Nova land cleaning punches. All right, we'll see how that roll, man. Appreciate the input, bro. Real talk. Anybody else have any input on the on the fight? Who you think winning this fight right now? Y'all think Gary Russell going to come back and fight Adrian Broner at 140? Broner want that fight. He want that 10 mil. I think it would be a good fight if Gary Russell come back and fight Adrian Broner, even though Gary Russell outboxed the, the shit out of him because, once again, a broken string tell us that Adrian Broner isn't going to let his hands go. Okay, Sparrow go to the hook to the body up top. Uh, uh, we need more of that. We need more of that because I, I know he has another gear. Sparrow has to have another gear because it, it, he have not really been committed to intense exchanges. Then maybe he's able to get in close, land about three or four, get out, and then come right back. He's throwing a hook to the body, jabs. You know, it's it's somewhat how you treat your sparring partner when they come in the first round. You know, like, you know, you just fill them out, play around with them a little bit. Abraham Nova is better than this. I know he's better than this, man. Come on, pick up, pick up the pace, man. They have Sparrow ahead by two rounds, you know. Andre score scorecard unofficially. Sparrow with the jab coming in. I like that. I like that, Sparrow. Let's do more of that. Come with the two. Come on. There you go. Punching the bunches, combinations. Let's go. There you go. He's opening up now, throwing that jab up, up to the um, upper le level chest to the body. Down low. 
I mean, he's really, he's really boxing. I mean, I don't know if Abraham Nova say no matter what Sparrow do, I'm going to walk out of here 19 and 0. He don't have a sense of urgency at all. I don't fucking know. Because I'm going to tell y'all, man, it just seems like Sparrow, he hasn't even changed gears yet. Straight left. I mean, straight right. I mean, I, I like the straight right. If he would have been a little bit closer, it probably would have did a little bit of damage, man. Is it just me or if, you know, Nova is just like stuck in the Milky Way right now? Okay, a lot of head movement with 25 seconds remaining and none of them are touching each other. There you go, Nova. Nova lands the right hand. Sparrow takes it well. Okay, both fighters land the jab again. A little bit of action to close out the seventh frame. Oh, nice one, two, man. That's what I'm talking about, Nova. Nice one, two. That's kind of the best shot of the freaking round. Oh, to, to seal it up at the end with the right off the chin. Yeah, seal it off at the end with the right off the chin. That's what I'm saying. Russell can't go to 140, AB too big. Right now, from what I'm saying, man, he, he he's trying to, you know, he had the scale up there saying he was 142. You no, know, I mean, I, I was talking to somebody today that was saying but that basically Russell go to 135 and they can fight at 135, but I don't see Adrian Broner. The only way Adrian Broner it makes 135 is he had liposuction two or three times before he make weight. That's it. I can't see Adrian Broner making 135. Naturally, a natural cut. You know, I can't see that shit happen. Sparrow winning with jabs. I know, man. I was, you know, we was really looking forward to these top three fights. Especially the cold feature. We, we thought this was going to be fire. It's the eighth round, though. He said anywhere Nova, anytime um, he hit the body of Nova, he going to feel it. Okay. Okay. The fight changing. Changing a little current in there. Shit, Sparrow hugging on for dear life right now. Now he going to try to pick the man up. Sparrow, what is going on, man? I thought you had another gear, bro. Nova is showing you why he he's 18 and 0 right now. But will it be enough? He didn't go down, so he should be good to go, you know? Okay, Nan's getting a little bit sloppy. It's getting Bernard-esque. It, Goddamn Avery Sparrow spit out his mouthpiece, people. You know, they're saying it's a veteran move. Oh, Nova's coming on right now. In the eighth round, Nova's coming on. He's having a solid round right now. He's landing hard combinations to the body. Sparrow trying to get back in the groove. Now they kind of going mono and mono, man. Now it seems like Abraham Nova is committed to stand in the pocket and, and pressure Sparrow. He's having success with pressure and Sparrow. Man, nice, solid hook to the body. Two hooks to the body by, by Nova. I don't know if Sparrow's still recovering in this round, but Nova's definitely picking up the pace and landing 
some crucial shots right now. I believe he did find the next Infinity Stone, for real. Because his beard's starting to glow just a little bit more. Sparrow's looking a little sloppy right now. He's going to come back, Sparrow, in the ninth round and, and get the eighth back. Because if they saying he's, he's he, you know, he up two rounds, he just dropped that one. So for him to put the first marker on the um, ledger of Abraham Nova, he needs to come on here and really push the gas on this um, ninth and tenth round. He really does. He can do it. Because it, it just doesn't seem like he's been put forth um, max effort effort in the fight anyway it just seems like he's been cruising so to speak waiting on the counter landing his one shots when he feel like it. every now and then he'll, he'll send off some um, combinations but besides that i can't say he was overly um active man you know and, and, he, and he sure don't act like he have a sense of urgency man to win this fight you going in there you put an 18 and 0 um fighter on your record that's just gonna look solid Yeah, Nova round for show. Sure. Nova comes out with a jab, landing landing off the forehead of Sparrow. He's standing to the plan right now. Nova is opening up. He's really pressuring Sparrow. Sparrow's not responding with any punches to get Nova's attention, so Nova's just standing right there. Wild right hand missed by Nova. Who want it? Who want it? Let's go. They got it all tied up. Yeah, let's run to the finish line. He tripled up the jab, Sparrow. None of it really landed, though. Okay, right hand got in by Sparrow. All right. Nova slowed down just a bit right now. Right hand, step in, pivot, shoot the left to the body. Man, you know, Nova shines when he when he boxes and really moves in. You know, looking at the way Sparrow's boxing right now, I think Nova can just take this fight over if he wanted to. He's already hurt Sparrow. Sparrow may not have the best condition for what I'm looking at um, in this ninth frame. There you go. Nova's measuring him real nice, man. Sticking, sticking the jab out there, popping him with the damn right to the body. I just never get a, a, a clear understanding of fighters who make noise every time they fight. And they're not really doing any damage, though. You know, that's just a habit of them to to um to provide a little bit more confidence in them throwing the punch. I don't know. Nice return by um, Sparrow. But, you know, Nova is staying active with the jab, and he's waiting to send that right. He tried to shoot that right up the middle. He missed with the uppercut. He's getting more confident now. And I, th I think the way it's looking, if Sparrow don't do anything, man, He's going to squeak out these next two rounds and win by this decision. Sparrow's park benching on the ropes. Now he's holding. It wasn't a good round for Sparrow. I have that round being won by Nova. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts. I don't need the fucking jury. That shit. Nova's ahead in this fight right now. He should be. But you never know with the way some of these boxing judges score. But I'll be hard-pressed to think they're going to take this man O oh, by the way Sparrow's been boxing tonight. 
it's the way they breathe. And I, a, a Hodges, I, I know. Um, it's a method, but I'm not going to mention the boxer's name, right? But when I was down here with Paul Williams, right? And that came up. One of the fighters that he was training was doing that. And Paul turned to him and said, what, what, what's with all that? I didn't have to do that when I was I was punching. You don't need that. This is extra energy that you're using. And I ain't lying to you either. Paul Williams told me that. Like, that's just extra energy you're using. What's all that? I want you to put work in with your hands. You can breathe out your nose. That's what he told me. If Sparrow comes hard, man, this is going to be a close fight. It might be a draw. That would be a win for Sparrow. But I think Nova's going to pull it out. Yeah, that's what Paul Williams told me about um, all that yelling, doing punches. He said, you got them giving your, I mean, you, you're giving off more energy you need to. And basically he was trying to say it doesn't do too much more. Okay, good counter. Straight counter by um, Sparrow. But he needs to do more than just stay on the outside and think he's going to have He's going to have re what was that? Okay. Jab to the body. Sparrow may have seemed like he's just a little bit tired now. Abraham Nova's doing good. Missed with that counter right. Minute 30 remaining, 90 seconds to some. Sparrow still on the jab. Not many combinations. Approaching a minute 10. This 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 fight is taken away for Sparrow. Okay. Sparrow try to come off with the counter. Nice defense, but none of your shots landed. There you go. Nice combinations by Nova on the inside. Hell yeah. Nice. Sparrow has turned turned the knob just a little bit more on these final. Oh, landed a nice solid right hand up top. Got, you know, was able to get Sparrow's attention, man. 35 seconds remaining. They they're another right hand by Nova. Twenty seconds remaining. I don't know for eighteen and zero. Could have got a better performance out of Nova. I really don't know. Leroy, what's good, man? Yo, we lit main event. What's good, combat? Not much, man. I've just been waiting for this main event. I was waiting for the freaking co-main event, but it kind of underwhelmed all of us. It had its moments, but it wasn't enough, man. Make us dance. We was looking forward to dance on the Thursday night. You know what I'm saying? And we just couldn't get into the mood of this fight. It was they was boxing. You know, they had some shining moments. That was it, man. I wonder why, um, but Bradley said it tonight. Some people use use it to breathe. Um, Nova One, yeah, I absolutely think Nova One. Heard you on Mr. The Zone. I was like, you need to be live. <laughs> I was just over there before I went live. I was just over there, you know, stopping through before I went live. You know, just stopping through, showing some love. That's all. Talk some boxing. I 
I don't know yet, but I still might be in Vegas next week. I'm not sure. I'm waiting on some information. Damn, I know he called. Shit. The Maloney brothers, man. Y'all better pray real tight. Because y'all going to be in the media for the wrong reason. Both of them come over here to the U.S. and lose in the same week. That ain't going to be nice for nobody. Nope. What? Damn. I want to see y'all walking around here with a gold beard like that because that's that's not the type of gold they do that shit, you know, over there. But now, that look like he bleached this shit with goddamn um, gray poupon or goddamn a, a, a different type of mustard. Ah, that mm -mm, no. Look like he 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 goddamn powdered that shit with some curry sauce. Curry sauce with lemon juice. That's not what you see all the time. Heinz mustard. Yeah, man. That's that's not a beard that you walk around on. Uh uh. No. No. I'm surprised he didn't do his hair like that. That shit would look, that shit, you know, that would have got racist real quick. People would have been looking like, man, come on, bro. You setting us back. Don't do it. The main event is on deck, man, finally. Jason Maloney's on deck, man, and the Bantamweight division. And if, you, if you're thinking like I am, you know, Jason Maloney was supposed to be the previous partner of Joshua Greer Jr., Unfortunately, things changed in boxing during COVID-19, so he ended up fighting Mike Planilla, and Joshua Greer ended up losing the decision, but he came on strong on the later rounds. But rewind that, what if he would have fought Jason uh, Maloney? How would he have did? I believe he would have went in there and defeated Jason Maloney and still would have kept, in, in, kept himself in a title contention. I really can't tell you what the maneuvering process is of boxing, but sometimes it can be, unfortunately, to the detriment of the fighter, especially knowing that I believe, you know, Joshua Greer could have did better, much more better showing in facing Jason Maloney. But he faced Mike Planeel. Now, you know, he may get, get the title shot and then um, Greer have to work himself back up the ladder to get that title shot. Um, the champions in that division, of course, the Bantamweight division is tough right now. You have John Casemiro, and then you have Nioya Anui. He's a unified title. And then you also have Yordina Bali. Yordina Bali, was, he's the WBC champion. And um, he fought Rasheed Warren for the vacant title, right? So he's supposed to fault Nonita Donaire, who was coming off that unanimous decision, um, unanimous decision loss to Anui. You know what I'm saying? And he kind of made Anui go back to the drawing board and say he got to get stronger and all that. Stronger? You just got to learn how to box better. You know, people just call him monster, and he was he had all this power and, and, and all this punishment to deliver. But you went in there with a veteran like Donaire, and he went the distance and showed you it's all about boxing. And he was very crafty. So come off a hard fight with a newie 
and they want to automatically send him next door to the WBC, put him at the top of the rankings to face Nordina Bali. They really trying to get Donaire a title. So that's the makeup up top, man. And not to mention my boy Rigandau. Rigandau's back there, man. I don't know if y'all seen it, but he did pick up a WBA regular title, I believe. Rigandau's back. Look, Rigandau has dropped weight and he's currently in the 118 division. If you think it's, it's, it's not a matter of time before he gets a big name fight, you're mistaken. They're going to match Rigandau up with somebody down there in the bantamweight division. And it's going to be very interesting, y'all. So Anui, Casemiro, and Abali, the champions across the board. And we're going to start seeing some of those champions defend their titles against the top rank. And I expect Rigandau would be one of them. Um, Mike Planilla, the Filipino fighter, just fought Josh Grit. I'm pretty sure he's going to be in there. And Jason Maloney right now is, is ranked. Let me check before I say something. I think Jason Maloney is ranked or was ranked. I'm, I'm, I'm going to check first. Yo, like I thought, Jason Maloney is ranked before um, behind Joshua Good Jr. All right. If you're looking for uh, Mike Plania, Mike Plania took the fight on last minute notice. So you're not going to find him in the rankings yet. But if Jason Maloney wins tonight, um, he... I don't know. He, he he may move to the number one contender for Casemiro. I'm not sure how they're going to play that game. I'm not sure. But if he doesn't win tonight, that means Joshua Greer. It helps out Joshua Greer Jr. Because he has a lot of people behind him. It's not like Joshua Greer is going to drop down to the bottom of the food chain. No, he's going to stay near the top of the ranking system. Tell my Joshua Franco. Yeah, that's what we're looking at for that banner weight, y'all. I like them because they said if the money right, they'll fight. Respect the Maloney's. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people say that. If the money's right, they must be getting some pretty decent. We don't know what the what the what the price tag is, you know, like what's right for them. Sometimes thirteen dollars right for some people. I wonder I wonder how much the tag was for them. I'll find out after I get the press release. I like that though, man. You know, his brother's up there, his, his brother up there holding the mitt for him. Got black eyes. I like that, man. I like that family bond, especially in combat. You just don't see that shit, man. His brother was undefeated and lost, and he's here helping out his brother prepare for his match. Eyes swelled up and everything. I, I like that, man. I salute them for that, man. Real talk. I like it. I, I, I respect it. <laughs> I just say not the, not the Charlos, man. You motherfucking right, boy. Cause God damn it, <laughs> if the Charlo look, the Charlo they lose, and the next one fighting shit. You think you're gonna see Jamel in there holding the mitts for Jamal? You think you're gonna see Jamal holding the mitts for Jamel? That shit ain't happening, bro. That shit ain't happening. They gonna say nah, cause you gotta get that yourself. Where your coach at? What there, Jane? Okay, all right. We're running shields at. All right, get him. That's his job, not mine, man. And plus, I got to go put some ice on this shit. Goddamn Canelo did me dirty.
You know, I was talking to um, H Money the other day about Errol Spence, whether he was a great fighter or not, right? And he talked about how he defeated Kell Brook, and then, you know, he was he was able to fight. Um, you know, Sean Porter, Mikey Garcia. So let's just take those three. Kale Brook, Sean Porter, and Mikey Garcia, who moved up two weight classes, but already had a belt at 140, which he vacated after defeating Sergey Lipinets and moved and moved up to 147, right? So my my response was if Spence didn't defeat three great fighters, how does it make him great? And within a three, when it, within a group of fighters, how many fighters need to be great for that particular um, fighter like Errol Spence to be considered great? Like, he has the WBC and IBF title now. So being that he, he, he went in there and defeated Kell Brook, who defeated Sean Porter for the first time, and Kell Brook just coming off a loss against Gennady. So he gets the belt. And then he goes on to, to face Mikey Garcia, who wasn't a true 47-pounder. But yet and still, he's a four-division champion. Is Mikey Garcia con considered great? You know what I'm saying? He has four-division championships. Okay. Let's just say he is. That's one. All right? Because no one will consider Kell Brook as great. Then you turn around and say, Sean Porter. Sean Porter has been the IBF champion and the WBC champion. Him and Errol Spence have mirror comparisons in their achievements. Both of these guys has held the same belts in the division. Does that make Errol Spence great right now because he's been able to defeat Sean Porter last time and pick up the WBC belt? I will have to say no. I, I, I would just have to say no, man. You need a little bit more. Um, Errol Spence needs to potentially unify this division or something because he's much he's getting much older and he needs to move up the division. He needs to go up to 154 sooner or later and try to pick up a strap up there. That's all I'm saying. And then, you know, what was a good point made was we talked about how people are critical of Crawford's resume. But I look at it like he's a three division champion. He was able to unify. Right now, his status is much greater value than Errol Spence. That's my opinion. Because if Crawford goes up to 154 and pick up a strap, even if it's the regular title, he becomes a four division champion. Adrian Brown is a four division champion. He will be a future Hall of Famer. But we just can't say, okay, just because he's up here acting a fool, he's not going to make it to the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame don't have no initiation or application that you fill out. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't. It doesn't have no freaking principles that you have to buy by for a certain amount of years. You don't have to have morals. But Jason Maloney's on deck. This is a very important fight. Some, some, hey, I'm thinking, you know, Jason Maloney has a lot more energy going into this fight. And having his brother there, I don't know, man, coming off that loss. On paper, it should be very interesting, y'all. I remember seeing Kenny Bayless in the, in the memorabilia shop in um, MGM Grand. I mean, he was cool people, man. I know, I know a lot of people, you know, didn't like him after that wilder fight, but he was cool people. He had a little personality to him too, man. Pretty funny guy. But who was fun though? Who was fun? Jerry Cooney. Jerry Cooney was hilarious. I ain't gonna lie. Man, look at that jab already, man. That he's establishing. Bias stabbing that long jab. Now you see how how Baez is is boxing tall. He's a taller fighter. He's not crouching down like Whitaker was. I mean, like um, I'm 
Yeah, I think it was Whitaker. Anyway. Bias is looking sharp early on. Bias with the jab. He's he's looking strong. I'm not gonna lie, Bias is looking strong, man. It looks like the bigger fighter anyway. He just got some broad shoulders on him, which I don't know if it's gonna um help him out or whatever. But he looked like the stronger fighter so far. And it's only the first round out of 10, man. They mom, they won't fight. That's why Jamal moved up. Yeah, they was in the same division. They was in champions in the same division. And then, you know, Jamal decided to move up. But guess what? You got you to make a living. You know how much money they'll make fighting each other? They need to start thinking about them Ferraris, those sports cars they got. Fake it for the fans. Do like World Wrestling Entertainment. Fake it for the fans. Convince us y'all hate each other. Get dirty in the media. And then shake hands after and goddamn say, you know what? I took all y'all to the bank. Do the same thing Floyd Mayweather did when he fought Conor McGregor. He let Conor McGregor do some shit nobody would get away with. Bias is very, very active, man, on the jab. Pressing. He's right there in the pocket, man. He looks strong. Oh, nice right hand by Bias. Maloney is standing there, though. He's, he, he's standing his ground. But I don't think his shots have no effect. He's boxing. He's boxing. But he doesn't just seem like he has enough power. I don't know, man. The, the Jamel that fought Tony Harrison, bro. If he bring that out to Jamal, shit. <laughs> That would be something crucial. Did you see the look he had in his eye? The look Jamel had when he was fighting Tony Harrison? That shit was a look like, nah, I'm, I'm going home with my belt. Damn. Damn. And them Maloney's, they look alike. Absolutely. And goddamn it, them Bias twins look alike too. Lucky them. At what weight, Hodges? What weight, um, um, Jamal stops Jamel? What weight? Fifty-four. Oh, nice overhand right. Maloney took it well though. Maloney's a little scrapper though, man. He just haven't been able to get any respect. He's boxing though, man. You, you can tell the Maloney bros, they can box. You got to be elusive like that, man. There you go. Shit, Bias, Bias is on a, a freaking tear. You know, he's, he's just driven right now, man. Unless something hurt him. Unless he continue to box like he's doing and eluding, eluding any punishment coming back. Maloney can win this fight easy because he is boxing. He looks sharp, too. This would have been a good matchup for Joshua Grimm, man. Very good. Man, he caught Maloney. He caught Maloney. Slowed him up. This is a good fight. Mm -hmm. 
and get on the shoulders to get wherever you can. You just want to contribute to him. 54? Okay. I know it's, I, I know I, I don't think um Maul will come in the 54 to appease his brother. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it'll happen. He's probably been eating pretty well over that 160. So he'll probably say, Hey Mel, come on up, little bruh. Pat him on the head and shit. Give him a give him a bag lunch. Say, come on up for a minute, man. You know, um, get this bag, and then you can go back down to one fifty four. But first and foremost, let's get it straight. You ain't winning. Both of them head hunters, so you know they're gonna try to knock each other out. That'll be a that'll be a grand fight, man. They can really make a a, a nice purse. From fighting each other, the Charlo Ch twins. Because believe it or not, they can be bigger names than what they are, but they're not fighting anybody. Yeah, he went and got went in there and, and um, regained his title against Tony Harrison. But Jamal Charlo, what's next for Jamal Charlo? You know, it don't seem like he ever gonna fight face Canelo Alvarez, on uh, Demetrius Andrade. I mean, what 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 are we gonna do, bro? Like, what are we doing? But, you know, we need to see him fight somebody. Seriously. If he's not going to get Canelo, man, go at the 168 or something. Do like Canelo's doing. Go to 168, fight somebody. I know, you know, a fight between Jamal Ch um, Charlo and Caleb Plant would be nice. I wouldn't recommend going next, next door to the WBC, God damn it. And fighting David Benavidez, even though that fight would be nice for him. Either way, it'll be nice for the for the freaking ticket sales. Okay, we're in the third round, man. You know, Bias um, started off pretty strong, but what I like about Maloney, he's warmed up, and he ain't going nowhere. I like his movement; he's light on his feet. And every time he throws a jab, you know, he's coming forward. It looks like he's small and compact and kind of stiff, but he, he's boxing, man. Jason Maloney is boxing. I like what I'm saying. Him and his brother, you know, they're not pushovers, man. That's good DNA to be twins and both in the ring boxing. Nice work by Bias on the inside. Nice work. Now, now Maloney returns to present, trying to wrap that shit with a nice bow on it. But Bias is still firing off, man. Still firing off. Look at look at Maloney on the inside. I like this, man. I like what I'm seeing from Maloney. He got them bookmarking hooks off the ribs of Baez. I like what I'm seeing, man. This dude is tough. It's only in the third round, though. Man, three punches all landed off the top of the head of Baez. You got to move that head, son. Damn, that was like four or five punches by Baez. This is a chest-to-chest, -chest, mano a mano man. Close quarters fight right here. I like, I like it. They need to get with James Tony doing and learn how to box on the inside. It can be a, a lot more easier. I like what I'm saying though. Bias is going to the body, stepping back, and then letting go two more punches. Smooth, very smooth. One two combination when he separates. 
Maloney with a one-two combination, man. Moves out, reset, comes back on the inside, goes to the body, shoots the uppercut. Very smooth, man. Short hook on the inside by Maloney, man. He's working up in there, man. Look at Baez. Baez left his feet trying to throw that hook. I like that. These motherfuckers throwing hands. Bias has a little cut on his eye, it looks like. That's what that's what you get. You know, it's third round, and both of these fighters are already committed to fight on the inside. It's gonna be a bloody ass fight if it keeps going that way. But I ain't gonna lie, it's entertaining. It's showing up as the main event like it should, and I like it. I like it. Um, they don't have to. We we want both Marquez to um both Marquez to fight each other, but they never did. Um, who would you have Rafael versus Juan? Who would you have Rafael versus Juan? Um I'm kind of biased. I'm I'm kind of biased with Juan myself. I'm kind of biased in that state. I would definitely say one out of that. Maloney smothering his punch is smart. Maloney can't take these hooks. He's a little, he's a little scrappy fighter, man. He seems like the smaller fighter, but he, he's fighting pretty big right now. Bias sent that down uppercut to the stars. He went back to it, too. He's really digging, man. It's a good fight. Maloney's on the inside again. By his measuring, pushes him out with the left and then sends a right. That's smart. That's slick. Look at the look at the movement of Maloney. Just give him a little nudge with the left elbow and then throw that body shot. Bias staying active though. It's only the fourth round, man. I'm gonna see how you know the gas tank is on both of these guys. Right now, they seem very, very full. Man, look at that double, that damn double um hook to the body by Maloney, man. He's working. Maloney is working. Maloney is absolutely working. Mm, right hook up top. I don't know if he has enough power to stop him early on, but once Baez get fatigued, he might he he, he might be for the um he might be there for the knockout, man. Because Maloney is landing some solid shots on Baez. He's marking them up, making them wear the fight. But Baez is still game, though, man. Maloney has a, has a cleaner. He has a cleaner look to him than his brother did in his fight right now. He's not taking too much punishment from Baez, man. I like this inside fight, though. It is a grueling, a grueling type of activity. Oh, he he caught Maloney up top twice with that. So nice, nice, nice. Yeah, Maloney, um, you know, he's walking away with this fight. We can't really say it's close right now. He's walking away with it. So, you know, from what it looked like thus far for a 10-round fight, 
know, he'll take his brothers out for some drinks afterwards. Say, hey, don't worry about it, man. You took your first loss. It's all good. I took my first loss a ways back. And I recovered. You're recovered, too. Yeah, I agree with that. He is getting the better of um, Leonardo Baez. He's scrappy, man. Jason's scrappy. He's very scrappy. That just goes to show you how, how freaking tough Joshua Franco was yesterday because he fought a damn good fight, and he, he was able to get the knockdown in the 11th round. It goes to show you how tough his brother was. Look how he got down jab and step in with that uppercut, man. Very, very smooth. Hook to the body. Bias is look, bias is throwing with bad intentions. He's throwing to change the whole whole damn night. He is. He's not holding back at all, man. Bias is game. Another hook to the body. Maloney seeing, look, Maloney acts, you know. He seems like he's seeing everything, though. He's not really being caught with shots that he isn't seeing, you know, and, and taking them off balance or anything. I don't like how he's, he's walking in with his hands down there. And he's not really throwing any punches. Like you can do, you can, you can um, do head shifting from shoulder to shoulder, but you're not throwing anything to the body of the head. It's pointless. Hmm. There you go. There you go, Maloney. Nice defense. Nice defense. He's 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 breaking um bias down, man. I am too. Buys with the one two combination, stand strong. Still standing the fight. Oh, nice right up top by Maloney. Bias is eating an incredible amount of shots. I'm not going to lie. He's showing he has a pretty good beard on him. But it's not like Maloney is just this power puncher. They're talking about the ruptured eardrums that Andrew Maloney faced when he was in there with Joshua Franco. He's talking about the rematch. He said he knows he can beat Joshua Franco. He looked at the fight a couple of times so far. And you're probably looking at the same thing I am. Nobody won, um, Alves. The fight is in the sixth round, and Maloney is winning right now, easily. 
Yeah, two busted eardrums, I believe. Franco tore them eyes up. <laughs> hey, hey, Joshua Franco probably saw this. He's looking at this, this fight card. He's probably like, that's my work right there. That's my work. Respect my work. For real. So you so you think they got it 5-0? It's, it's, it's highly possible, man. I thought they would have gave Baez at least one round out of that. The first round. And look at that hook to the body that Maloney got in, got out. Man, Maloney can box, man. Yeah, he gave the, the second, rather. Jason Maloney, man. These brothers can fight. Mm. Oh, he's making a miss too. After giving them work. After giving them work, man. Nice defense by Jason. It seems like Bias is trying to put every ounce. Look how Bias just leading with his head. It's almost like a turtle, man. And 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 Jason's like, you keep that head out there. I'm gonna I'm gonna tat it up. I'm going to score. Don't worry about it. You keep it out there long enough, I'm going to give you what you're looking for. I like what I'm seeing with um, Jason Maloney. Very tough, man. Fighting on the inside. I like how he's keep going back to the hooks, to the body. Still moving around well on his feet. You can tell Bias one of those grimy dudes. Like, he loves standing in the pocket taking punishment because Bias ain't really trying to move his head or nothing. He's showing his medal, though. Bias showing his medal. But Maloney say, I'm here to put on the show. And that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. He can hardly hit my Maloney, man. Very, very solid fight. I like it. Definitely. That's going to be a good fight. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, I was just about to say that last Pierre fight was canceled. Now it's back on the on schedule, which is good. Seven out of ten, seventh round on deck. Damn, Duran got Corona. Yeah, man, um, it's real. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I, um, I'm not even gonna say it again. I just. I just thought it was a little bit of people that was catching the flu, or whatever the case may be. But you know, maybe I, I need to start taking it serious. You know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe maybe I need to just take a little bit more. Place a little bit more scrutiny to the severity of it. That's all. Maloney is seventh round. You know, he moving around very well. I was going to say he was going to take this round off, but he has to understand he's well ahead on this scorecard. He's boxing well, man. Much respect to the Maloney brothers. He's boxing well tonight. Dubbing up on the left hook is Baez, man. I like what he's doing. 
He's still game, man. He's still at the plate, man, trying to send home runs. I ain't gonna lie. That's what he's, that's what Byers is doing. He's a tough kid, man. But he needs more. Look how he's throwing those shots, man. Byers is throwing them motherfuckers with conviction. He's throwing that shit to baptize Maloney. Maloney's just boxing. Look at that uppercut. Pop the head up a bias, man. Maloney's in there just grooving. He's boxing. And he's, put, he's putting on a show, Maloney. He's actually putting on a, a, a show. Keeping his head on the chest of Baez. What a, what a solid fight, man. And you, and you see Baez is taking the um, – he's wearing the fight. That's because he, he really don't think that the power of Maloney can hurt him. But Maloney is, is landing some very – Solid shots, man. He's on the bezel with his punch combinations. Look at that. He just hit him with a right uppercut, ducked under, and came over and hit him with a right hook. Both shots landed. That shit was slick. That shit was slick. Look at Maloney go to work, man. Look at him cook. Look at him cook. Maloney's cooking right now, goddamn it. Fuck Fourth of July weekend. Maloney's grilling right goddamn now. He's seasoning the motherfucking meat. And the grill is hot, motherfucker. Shit. And Maloney got there say, fuck 4th of July. I'm cooking out now. It's a tailgate. Shout out to Jason Maloney, man, putting on a show tonight. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm impressed. I'm not going to lie to you. Ain't nothing solid about this. It's a wash. What are you watching? I'm watching the work, man. It's solid work from Maloney. You don't think he put in solid work? Look at the face of Baez. The rings didn't do that shit for him. It's solid work. Baez is boxing. The fight stopped. What I tell you? Hodges? Come on, Hodges. They stopped the fight, bro, because he was putting in work. This dude was putting in work, man. They stopped the fight. He was taking too much punishment. That's a good stoppage. That's a good fucking stoppage. This dude was taking too much punishment from Maloney. When Maloney hit him with that right uppercut, ducked under and hit him with the damn right hook. Oh, my God. His corner probably like, hell no, we got to get... We got to abort the mission. Abort the motherfucking mission. Yeah, yeah, the fight stopped via TKO because he was getting blitz, smashed, pummeled. Look at the face of Jason Maloney. It's look like he barely been in a fight. Get a get a get a um pan in on Baez. Baez was taking too much punishment, man. He can live the fight another day. He looks better because they removed the blood, but he was he was getting his ass kicked. Short notice fight. But a long ass whooping. So it was good. They stopped the fight. Yeah, Maloney watched him, but Bias was still trying to be game. But but the most effective combinations and the punches were definitely coming from Maloney. And he did watch him. I agree. But it was a it was it was a good fight to watch because. You get to see Maloney go to work. That last real combination he put together, when he hit him with that right uppercut, dipped under the left, and then hit him with the right hook, man, that shit was smooth, man.
That was sharp. I ain't gonna lie to you. That was sharp. Um, somebody asked um the first fights you've seen. I can't remember. Are you talking about on the street or in the ring? I can't remember the first fights I looked at on TV, to be honest. Well, at least at least one was able to get a stoppage to somewhat redeem the clout that was over his brother's head, Andrew. So that's a good thing. They get to go back home now and, um, you know, have some type of solidarity. Jason Mayhem Mahoney. Let me see what they have left, what they're coming up with. That was a good fight. Um, the fight card was okay. The fight was okay. But did y'all hear um, the situation with um, what was I about to what was I about to say? Um, did y'all hear anything else on Maurice Lee, man? <laughs> Jesus name, amen. As much as we say that, man, I hear that dude say that. Damn, he's been all around the media. In Jesus' name, amen. So I saw the boxer voice talking about it again. So now I guess um, they have came to the conclusion that they were trolled. And he used a platform to troll. I haven't even been trolled like that on my platform. But Maurice Lee came on there and, and got some mad airtime about potentially saying he's going to fight Errol Spence for $10 million. The good thing, Errol Spence did respond and kind of brushed it off like, you know, this dude's weird. He, he's crazy, whatever the case may be. So I don't think Errol Spence has got any confirmation that Maurice Lee, unless they playing this game real nice, Errol Spence is not going to be facing uh, Maurice Lee at Raider Stadium next month. I mean, not next month. The press conference is supposed to be next month from what Maurice Lee said. But, you know, when he returns to the ring, um, facing Maurice Lee. But it was hilarious, though. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> that shit was fucking funny, though. You seen the Tyson fight live? Listen, I have never seen a Mike Tyson fight live, man. And you know what? I, I, I'm not going to see it live now. I would have liked to have seen. I was in the military. So whenever Mike Tyson was knocking motherfuckers out, I, I either had shit to do. I was on deployment. <laughs> I, I was on the operation. Something like that. I was busy, man. I was busy as shit. Hagler versus Leonard. I just finished watching um, Leonard versus Tommy Hearns today. Very solid fight, you know, and, and and you know what? I look at a lot of people when it when it comes to putting the greats in there, and you know, them guys fighting fifteen rounds back then, even though they didn't have all the belts, you know, it's for the WBC, the WBA against Leonard and um, Le Leonard and um, Hearns. It was a good fight, man, because those rounds after the ten really weigh heavy on the fighter, and for Sugar Ray to come back and you know, do what he did, was able to get the stoppage. It was a fun fight to watch, man. Very fun fight. Watched it my my dad first time I seen a robbery. So you thought you thought Hagler coming out fighting differently than he ever fought in his life and the fight not going his way. 
You thought it was a robbery? Wow. I mean, you're not the only one who thought that, but why Sugar Ray, who was gone from 84 to 87, why was the fight even close to begin with? Why would Marvin Hagler change up his fighting style to fight someone that's been out of the sport for so freaking long? And then you got to give it up to Sugar Ray for coming back and fighting a tough fighter like Hearns, man. I mean, Hagler. He came out, man, he was going from 84 to 87 and came back and fought Marvelous Hagler. I mean, damn. Why would Hagler change up his fighting plan, fight fight style to face um, Sugar Ray Leonard? Why? I don't, I, I never, that's, that's puzzling to me. I um I talked to somebody who actually spoke to Hagler about why he did that, but I I'm just gonna have to wait till he on here to talk about it. I you know some people say it's hearsay, it ain't true or whatever, but he had the opportunity to you know talk with Hagler. I watched it live on PPV. Cool, cool. Hey, shout out and salute to you, D Ray. Have a good Friday, bro. In the weekend. Ray gave a blueprint, hit and run. Yeah, hit, hit, hit and box. They call it boxing, hit and run, hit and box, in and out. You know, shit, make that happen. Sugar Ray, one of my favorite fighters, man. I put Sugar Ray above Floyd Mayweather when it comes to watching boxing matches. That's real talk. I love watching Sugar Ray Leonard fight. I do. I like watching him fight, man. I'm not going to lie to you. He still falls beneath the fights I watched with Muhammad Ali, of course. But if you're talking about Sugar Ray Leonard, who people never want to put above Floyd Mayweather, I always watch Sugar Ray Leonard. I like watching Sugar Ray Leonard fights. I thought he was always more entertaining than Floyd Mayweather. And I think if they would have fought at a given time, I don't want to see any primes, but in competitive eras, I truly think Sugar Ray could have beat Floyd Mayweather. I don't know what you think. What you think? Sweet P versus Julio Cesar Chavez. That was a robbery. Absolutely. Magic Taylor. Magic Taylor. Come on now. Don't get me started. <laughs> I feel bad, Major Taylor, man. Just couldn't get two more seconds. Two more seconds, man. Major Taylor life would have been changed. That man wouldn't have went off the deep end from losing that fight. He was never the same after that fight. All from freaking Richard Steele. Damn. He just couldn't let that fight go, man. It's the last fucking round, dog. You trying to say I will? I, I, I'm, I'm good with the decision. I need to stop the fight. He couldn't take one more blow. Come on, bro. You trying to tell me Magic Taylor couldn't take one more punch? He had two fucking seconds left. That's just fucked up. Every time I think about it. Would Mayweather be Hagler or Hearns? Man, Hearns is a prop. I mean, come on, man. The reach of Hearns, that's that that that'll, that'll be a problem. That'll be a problem. Now, could he could he potentially outbox Hagler if he can withstand the pressure? It's possible, you know. Floyd Mayweather had good movement. But Hagler or Hearns would be tough, man, in my opinion. I just look at Hagler being so freaking tough, man. Mayweather wouldn't be able to knock him out, so he would just have to box the shit out of him. And we know Hagler kept on coming forward. His pressure, him landing punches, you know, never stopped. I mean, Hagler was a tough dude, man. It's just a lot of these old heads that I grew up watching. I can't say that um, Floyd Mayweather would beat them. 
I don't I don't see Floyd handling that range from um Hearns, man. Tommy the hitman. I, I, I just don't see him handling. I don't care what nobody say, man. Um, they uh, shoot. They just robbed DeMarco the other day. Yeah, a lot of people was talking about how they robbed DeMarco, but DeMarco is gonna have to get back in and um, get another fight. But like I said, they absolutely robbed that man. I really don't know why they robbed him like that. I mean, like they they pickpocket the shit out that month. We know he won the fight. I'm not sure, man. And I'm curious to see um, Gerard, Gerard Anderson. I'm curious to see who they match him up with. I'm curious to see who they match him up with. Because I don't, you know, I'm pretty sure in the heavyweight division, he's not going to run into any surprises, man. Because the ones that's very competitive and will give him a tough go, I don't see him right now um, taking a fight with any of them. To be honest, um, they building up, they building him up pretty nice. I like what I'm seeing from this guy, but um, I think this is a good time for him to build up his record. You know how they do. He's taking an opportunity to build up his record against some um, some average fighters, and he should be able to do what he do. I heard he he might be fighting on the um, same card as Jarrell Miller, you know. So that'll be interesting. But if anybody thinks Jarrell, Gerard Anderson is ready for Jarrell Miller, you, you gotta be you gotta be smarter than that, man. He's he's not ready for Jarrell Miller. I don't care if they both have the same nickname, um, Big Baby, and nothing like that. He's not ready for Jarrell Miller. Adolfo, what's good? I didn't see you come in, man. Maloney won seven um, seven round. Yeah, I think he was trying to. Um, give us a spoiler and shit because it was a delay. I feel you. Shoot, they just robbed. I agree 100%. Tommy Jab was a problem. I just feel like Tommy would be a problem. Um, the pressure from Marvin Hagler would absolutely be a problem for Mayweather. Even though, you know, he had his, when he was pretty boy, he was back there and he was, you know, he was willing to stay in the pocket and he had decent power. But it's a lot of them fighters back then that had real, true quality power. You know, Hitman Hearns, Marvin Hagler. I mean, they was brutal, man. They, they, they was brutal. Sugar Ray Leonard, his combinations, the way he moved in the ring. I would put him over Floyd Mayweather if they fought. I would. A lot of people say, oh, he would. Floyd Mayweather would have outboxed Sugar Ray Leonard. Do you know if we talking about Sugar Ray Leonard? We ain't talking about practice. We talking about Sugar Ray Leonard. We ain't talking about sparring, goddammit. We talking about Sugar Ray Leonard, the same one who stepped up and fought blonde Donnie Lenon. A dude that was a goddamn light heavyweight. And, and, and he fought. He had titles already at light heavyweight. Sugar Ray Leonard fought him at 168 and still beat him. And still beat Donnie Lenon. Watch the fight. And you think Floyd Mayweather going to come in there? Man, come on, bro. Come on now. Stop it. I wish I could see some of these. What y'all think about Tyson? Who, who he needs to fight? Um, James the Beast Wilson? Will that be good for, you know, show and tell? Since James the Beast trying to be like Mike Tyson, bring both of them in there together and try to, you know, emulate moves together james the beast wilson or you know have shannon briggs come in there hype up the shit um you know he respect mike tyson so they can they can kind of sell the exhibition bout shannon briggs do what shannon briggs does and come in there and do an exhibition i'm not sure who else would be a pretty good bout for him seriously i'm just tired of him making all these videos and him hitting the mitts and then um, we, we're not getting any type of opponent. Like, we ain't trying to find motherfucking, um, 
You know who 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 would be a good exhibition bout for him too? Jerry Cooney. Jerry Cooney, I saw him shadow boxing in the MGM Grand. Dude, dude still got some hands. I'm telling you, he'll beat up the average motherfucker or or higher. I'm telling you, Jerry Cooney is a big dude, dog. Like some of these motherfuckers I thought were short, and they taller than me. And Jerry Cooney is still solid right now. His his, his age. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I was like, shit, Jerry Cooney pretty goddamn tall. When I saw Andy Konoski, I say, shit, how the fuck? Andy Konoski is taller than me. I'm 6'3". Like, how the fuck this dude taller than me? He wasn't Charles Martin tall, but he was tall. I thought he was a little short, chubby, plump dude. You know, Michelin man ask. No, man. Andy Konoski is pretty, pretty damn tall. I'm like, shit. He ain't Deontay Wilder tall. He He's not Charles Martin tall. Anything like that. Vitaly or Vladimir Klitschko tall or Tyson Fury, but they taller than me. It made me feel bad. I said, fuck all that. Um, Holyfield, Briggs, Lennox, they're his age. Okay, the, the real deal, mad love for him. You know, he's out of the A, even though he's from Alabama. We got mad respect for the real deal down here. Um, out of the three you just mentioned, Lennox Lewis has always been in shape every time I've seen him in person, right? I think he'd just be too much for Mike Tyson to conform to what Tyson wants to happen. Lennox, I'm going to tell you, Lennox is not the nicest dude, bro. Lennox played by his own rules. That's why he was a dog in the ring. And that's that's real talk, man. Lennox will tell you straight up, to him, no, I don't want to do an interview. I don't want to no, no, you can't take a picture. That's Lennox, man. <laughs> I don't know why he like that, but that's Lennox. I have to scratch him out of that. He, he he won't conform. Lennox will probably go in there and throw a punch just to say, you know what? Hey, I just had to get, get see if I still had it. But Holyfield and Briggs, check the box. I will have to go to Shannon Briggs to kick it off because, you know, he's a funny dude saying the same shit all the time. You know, let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Huh? <laughs> I mean, I ain't never seen nobody say the same shit over time, and it's funny every time he said. it. But Shannon Briggs can fight, man. People don't understand. He used to kickbox. Man, box. Shannon Briggs can actually get down. And he stays in pretty decent shape. I ain't going to lie. So, And then after Briggs, let's go Holyfield. Let's get Holyfield back in there. But definitely not Lennox, because Lennox, in my opinion, he may bend the whole motherfucking rule book and try to knock Tyson the fuck out. I'm telling you, I de- I dealt with this dude. Lennox is a different type of dude. I-, I I have a better understanding as to why he was who he was. When him and Hasim Rockman went at it, I can believe him having a little bit of, you know, coming up mean mugging and having some attitude and shit. I can see him. Uh, and how seen Rockman going at it. I know that dude will tell you straight up now nah, you can't get a picture. Now nah, you can't get an interview. And he won't even freaking hesitate. He don't give a fuck. Lenny Lewis don't give a damn. Believe that shit. The people you take a picture with, you ca- you you catch them with somebody else and they tell you, oh, take a picture, get an interview. Besides that, he ain't gonna do no motherfucking interview with you. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. But what I was saying earlier about um, Tyson Fury going on to Anthony Joshua, he's mad because Anthony Joshua turned down $80 million for two-fight deal. Now, supposedly Anthony Joshua was making all this money for one fight, which is like $75, $80 million. And you have to understand, if it, if it was in Saudi Arabia, you, you can't just say, okay, that's what you're making right now because you didn't make that kind of money in the U.K., so you can't say, okay, we went over here and got the liquid money from the uh, in Saudi, and that's what and that's what you're worth right now. So if by chance he did get 75, 80 mil, he didn't take that shit home. But if he was to get two fights, 40 apiece, 
yeah, it's quite separate from the numbers he's used to when he's fighting for a belt, a rematch against Andy Ruiz or whatever the case. I think he should take it. You know what I'm saying? Joshua, you, you can't make every freaking tough fight tough through negotiations and then turn around and say, well, Tyson Fury, they didn't, they, they didn't want to give us a fair price. It seems like everybody that you want to fight to defend your titles, man, they are just so happy to get into the ring with you. You willing to just say, okay, yeah, you get you get 30% here. Um, you get 33% here, this, that, and the other. But now Tyson Fury has the belt. Y'all should be willing and able to come to a, a monetary agreement and make this fight. That's if Tyson Fury defeats Deontay Wilder. That's a big if. You know what I'm saying, people? Looking forward to Errol Spence stepping back in there. I really am. And I'm pretty sure at this point in time, um, let's be let's be honest. Him having implants in his in his mouth, it's gonna always be something that he's had to be highly um on the on the front side of his thought process because those teeth are gone. So within the rest of his boxing career, he's gonna have to worry about those teeth being popped out. He's going to be wearing a mouthpiece up top. And, you know, you have mixed martial artists all the time. They they lose teeth because they have the, the implants. They lose teeth and then they get them put back in there afterwards. It's going to happen to Errol Spence. Believe it. He get popped in the mouth. He's going to lose some teeth. And then he's going to have like a. Um, like Bernard Hopkins used to have a flipper. You put a flipper up in the top of your mouth. And it has teeth on it. It's no way those permanent teeth are going to stay in there if he gets hits in the mouth or in a tough fight with somebody. And, you know, he has a mouthpiece on. When he take that mouthpiece on, his teeth going to be in that mouthpiece. Period. It's going to be in that mouthpiece. And they got to get it out. And then the mouth mouthpiece is going to feel a little bit different. But that's fact. That's going to happen, people. So I don't know how he's going to handle it. He still has, what, at least five years left on his boxing? We're not sure. It depends on what he's done with his money, investments, and stuff like that. But, yeah, Errol Spence, I'm looking forward to see him come back. If it's against Danny Garcia, cool. If it's against Maurice Lee, <laughs> cool. You know, we we, we got to check it out. You know what I'm saying? I wanna, I'm, I'm trying. I want to get Maurice Lee. Um, for an interview, man. I want to see what this cat's about. I'm just waiting on him to respond. But I want, I want, I want to ch chat it up with him, man. But that's about it, people. It's twelve fourteen. I know y'all got to get up on Friday. I appreciate everybody for stopping through. Um, be sure to um, be sure to share the video and um, tune in next time. I will be. Uh, begin to cover that next card that's coming up. And like I said before, shout out to Carlos Jackson. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. He will um, be on deck probably this weekend over there in Vegas. Um, and, and he will be on the card coming up, the next card, I believe, that's coming up either on Thursday, I believe. It might be on Thursday. But, yeah, he's 16-0, and 0, man. 11 knockouts. He's going there versus an 18 and one guy with 10 knockouts. Um, Jose Vivas. So yeah, we're going to be checking that shit out straight, straight out, straight out. Um, the ATL down here, man, you know what it is. Hey, be sure to turn up and tune in. Salute from world combat sports.